Like, I, I genuinely think that, uh, for all intents and purposes, Gerard's a fucking retard, and he was the perfect fucking person to have at the face of this. Yeah. And just the father dad. and the father is not concerned because all the accusations are coming from internet people, and internet people don't matter to him. Pulling one yeah. thread about the charity thing is going to upheave my entire life in a way that's it's based War Thunder. <laughs> I, love, I love that game. There's <laughs> drama around that game. I don't know if I've ever told you the drama. Is it because of the lollies? No. No. Okay. So these are people that really, really like historical vehicles. <laughs> and this has happened multiple times where people will get into autistic slap fights and they'll drop blueprints. <laughs> yeah. The community yeah, the manager the, the, the community manager had to guy be like, guys, we really like that you support us, but uh please stop leaking classified government documents on our forums. It looks really <laughs> bad. <laughs> 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 oh man i don't know I, like the one that i heard was because of this um uh, this lolly artist on youtube it was like uh, drawing the the vehicles as like f uh, fictional characters kind of like girls in panzer or like um what was that other show where the battleships like are personified as people oh azure lane yeah azure lane it, it basically and then they added his shit into the game as like body pillows and people were like what the fuck is this shit? I have no fucking clue what you guys are talking about right now. I'm going to be honest, Fourth and I'm kind of happy for this. Like, <laughs> the shit that you guys yeah. are talking I have no idea if I ever want to see a fucking battleship Sona. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Just look up Anime Anarchy, or Anime Anarchy, I think it is. He does, like, historical uh, videos, and he's, like, done one oh my from God. Uh, about the history of the USS Enterprise. Oh it was actually God. pretty good, minus the weep shit. Although he worked it in somehow. I love the Enterprise. That was such a good ship. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what was crazy is like even like the, this is something I overlooked when I was looking into military history. But th there was like a ghost story about the USS Enterprise after it got scrapped. It would show up outside of Ellis Island, like whenever yeah. like there was some kind of like yeah. danger looming. Yeah, and it I've was heard like a, that. it was yeah. a real yeah a real area ghost story. Yep. Yeah. And apparently, people saw it on the night before nine eleven. Yeah. No, the Gray yeah. Ghost was one of the one of the best ships in history, in my opinion. Yeah, the Big E, the Lucky E, the Galloping Ghost, the Gray Ghost. Like seriously, yeah. that ship should have been saved, but it, it was only been kept. Made. Yeah, it should it should have been saved. It should have been a, like a history, like a museum ship. Well, However. Yeah, because... However, like after 9 11 happened, like hours after the attacks, the only ship that was within, uh, like, you know, strike distance to do like a, a, a retaliatory strike was the new USS Enterprise, the yeah. nuclear aircraft carrier. <laughs> it, it was, it got done with like a training run and it just like went straight into the danger zone. Yeah. I mean, it's depressing too because like, she was the only Yorktown class CV to survive World War II. Essex class, right? Or no? What? No, was it was it Yorktown. Essex? Yeah, yeah, was... yeah. Essex was the the next class. Yeah, and and the funny thing too is like, um, Star Trek. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. The ship was named after the Enterprise because in the actual uh design documents for it yep. he actually was called the USS Yorktown, and yep. then Gene Roddenberry saw the your the uh enterprise and he was like this is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen like yep. machine wise so he renamed it as the enterprise yeah. so like it's just I mean, it's a shame because we lost every single yorktown class in world war ii other than that and it really really should have been made into a museum like seriously she made it all the way from before to the almost to the end of the war until like she got hit with a kamikaze in the front elevator on the deck like i mean for all the fucking harrowing shit like she was the first uh aircraft carrier to do night ops like yeah. literally like literally yeah. train uh night not literally was like the platform to train nightborn fighters during world <laughs> war ii and everything yeah i mean and she created was... the like, what were you gonna say oh she was just in 
so in the world. I mean, she was at Pearl Harbor. She was at Midway. She was at the Solomon. She was at the Santa Cruz. Like she was at Guadalcanal. Seen, she was yeah, like she everywhere. saw everything. She saw everything. The gray, and it is such a shame that like we didn't make the Gray Ghost into a museum because it was just single handedly I think my favorite ship in all of history. It's like it it's was still involved to this day. with what I thought it was. I, I was thinking about that because I thought it was. Uh, it was involved with two little raiders. Yep, the, she was escorting uh, Lexington or was it Yorktown? I forget which one it was that had all the B twenty five Mitchell bombers on its deck. York. She was I the think, escort yeah. carrier. Yeah. For that mission, like she was. In fact, her fucking like SPD dive bombers, the Scout Patrol like planes, they were the first ones to have air to air combat with the Japanese on the attack in Pearl Harbor. Yep. Scouting six. Like, um, oh man, there's just so much about it. But like from night ops to basically doing like creating the doctrine of aircraft carrier warfare for the Americans. Yeah. She shifted away from the battleship heavy style, but like, here's some fun facts, you know, by the end of the war, she is, Downed at 911 planes, sunk 71 ships, and damaged or destroyed 192 more ships. Yeah, and she has. She also has the only ship in like the U.S. Navy or any like Navy record to have 20 battle citations. Yeah, like no other ship comes close. Like presidential unit citations. Mm-hmm. Like, if that isn't like you know a fucking museum ready ship, I don't know what is. Like that's a fucking pedigree. I mean, you could almost say that the Enterprise was like a pivotal ship in the war with the Japanese. And, you know, like, cause... I mean, she was the lone carrier holding off the Japanese back in the day after um, the Battle of, uh, what was it? It wasn't uh, Midway, but like, I think it was somewhere in between like Guadalcanal. She was like our, our only carrier left. Was it uh, Santa Cruz? Maybe, because um, the other one was like, there was Yorktown which basically got sunk after the Battle of Midway because there was just too much damage. Then there was, like, um, Enterprise and, I think, Lexington, unless if I'm misremembering that one, because there was four uh, Yorktown-class uh, carriers, right? There was three. There was her, there was Yorktown, and there was Hornet. Hornet, yeah, that yeah. was the other one. Because Cause we lost forget, Hornet at Santa Cruz. Yeah, we lost Hornet, and then we thought we lost Yorktown, but she was able to get repaired within three days uh, for the battle at Midway. So we actually we, had... We repaired we her just a loser. Her. We yeah. repaired her just a loser at Midway. Yeah, we, we pulled off, like, a fucking engineering uh, miracle getting her out of the fucking, uh, like, Hawaiian uh, shipyard and got her underway for, and did two weeks' work in at least two to three days. Yeah, like, poor, poor Yorktown, like... Never oh, stood a man. chance. She was set up to fail. Yeah, it, it's like the the fucking stories, man, of, of just those carriers. Like we should have kept Enterprise. We really should like, have because she that, like that, she was like the capital ship of the Pacific Fleet or of any fleet. Wasn't Enterprise also where they signed the surrender? No, that was um, the USS Missouri. The okay, battleship. That was Missouri. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, we should have capped it, man. But I kind of, I'm kind of glad. Like every new aircraft carrier, every new class, like the first one in that line, gets named USS Enterprise. So it, it's a legacy, if anything else. Yeah, she does still live on. The living crap out of me. In the months of November and December of 2023, this thread was pulled and undid Gerard, the completionist Galil. These allegations are slanderous, and we believe we're done with selfish intent. This was all sparked from Gerard's family-run charity that, though they received hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations, did not donate a single penny of the money for nearly 10 years. The drama around it exposed Gerard's long history of lies, from lying that his company was covering the cost of the event. So for those guys who know, we had a show last year, um, and it, it, it went great, but it was very expensive, and we, TOBG covered the cost of it. Grossly overstating the amount his charity event, Indyland, raised. Almost, almost a million dollars in the last uh, last seven years. Um, really? and, uh, this, and this year we're doing it in person. Even lying about the disease, he's fundraising money for. Someone who's diagnosed with FTD uh, lasts about six and a half months. His sudden dip in views reflects the distrust the community now has with him, and this is how it was all undone. 
Well, from the outside, his life seems picture perfect, but for a local high school student, looks are deceiving. That was a circa 2006 story on Gerard Khalil's high school senior project. The description reads, quote, I was on KCOW News a few years back for my first feature on the true story of my mother's illness and battle with dementia. Unquote. Gerard's mother, at the age of 56, after years of exhibiting strange behavior, was diagnosed with frontal temporal dementia. The Khalil family, a family of seven, had their lives changed forever. Charles Khalil, Gerard's father, an immigrant from Lebanon, the same year Gerard's mother was diagnosed, began a yearly golf tournament for the disease. Being that Charles had amassed his wealth through his company that seemed to operate in consulting gas stations and community stores with the knowledge and resources gained from operating his own gas stations. With these connections, major brands like Monster, Pepsi, Coca-Cola all could be seen participating in the golf tournaments. But Gerard did not want to run golf tournaments or try the path his father had laid for him. Instead, he chose a ubiquitously uncertain path. Gerard wanted to make it in entertainment. It is not clear how his father reacted to this, only that he was not entirely supportive of Gerard, and no matter what success Gerard brought forward, and never matched his father's towering expectations. The amount of money I've made, the lives that I've changed, the people that I've helped, the, all the amazing the opportunities that I've had, the mm -hmm. cool things I could have done. Mm -hmm. My father still thinks that I'm not doing the right thing. Regardless, Gerard persisted, enrolling in Fullerton College in 2006. This was the same year he made his first YouTube channel, JB Super Badass 11. This appeared to only host his school projects and related material. This 2009 video is likely the first appearance of Greg Wilmont, who was one of Gerard's very close friends. Thank God you're paying me for this. Um, I hate to break it to you, but uh, we actually aren't paying you for this. There wouldn't be much else on this channel as Gerard was building a habit of scrapping projects and rebuilding them from the ground up. Like his second YouTube channel, Ari and Stone, created September 22, 2009. This channel, as the name implies, was a sketch-based channel with Gerard and a friend playing Stone and Ari respectively. Stone was the foolish, happy-go-lucky character and Ari was a prude that sought to bring order to his friend's chaos. While much of the comedy is bland and this trope has long been utilized to much greater effect, this series captures the looseness of a 2009 YouTube. He's right there. Hello, sirs. Would you like some homemade lemonade? Well, yes. We'd like to try your product. Could we please have a sample of your product and your phone numbers? I'm 12. Not off limits to me! This series was a flop, another unsuccessful channel that, to Gerard, warranted the creation of a new channel, one that wouldn't be so pigeonholed and one that would be set up not only to host his content on YouTube, but to also try to promote his website, thatonevideo.com. Unfortunately, this was never archived to the Wayback Machine when active. However, his YouTube channel was, but only the channel page. The majority of videos here are missing, but are clearly themed around a show satirically emphasizing masculinity with videos such as How to Torture a Thief Like a Man, Man to Man Time with a Man, Episode 2, How to Cook Steak Like a Man, Now You're a Man. In the Sea of Lost Media, one episode, specifically Episode 5 of the Now You're a Man cooking show survived. Wait a minute. Once people start realizing that we puppets are strong Why do all too? those titles, like, why do all those titles sound like, you know, what you would read off of an RTU stream? <laughs> like Just seriously rtu is stuck in like the early <laughs> 2000s youtube mentality there is some logic in my mind that says that all of the lol cows are interconnected and there is one point of origin but i haven't found it yet there yeah, is dimensional merge <laughs> there is one one original person and i don't even think it's chris chan i just haven't no, found it yet it's yeah Francis maybe Jack. yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that's where it is but like it starts to like you know maybe make uh diorio's theory that the law cow gene is a thing yeah like, oh, yeah the universal law cow theory yeah that there's like some genetic predisposition for being an internet spurg <laughs> oh man then there will never be a puppet president <laughs> Now, don't cross the meats. This around seven minute long video provides a blueprint for the rest of the series. It was not entirely a cooking show and leaned more into sketch comedy, with episodes adopting different themes. The effort applied was perhaps misplaced, considering the custom made puppets and the names on the credits show high production value. But the name, How to Cook Burgers Like a Puppet, would perform terrible in YouTube searches. That and there was no custom thumbnail. This was due to fail just from that, but Gerard provides a different reason for its failure. And then uh, I started a cooking show called Now You're a Man the Cooking Show, and that was a fun show that I did for a while. It was very offensive, very over the top, uh, and it was about putting bacon on everything. And then, <laughs> and then at the mealtime came along and they took that market, so I had to stop that show. This is the beginning of documenting Gerard's lies. What would normally be dismissed as possibly misremembering, misspeaking, or just another variation of simple human error cannot be done with Gerard as it happens too frequently. To start, Epic Mealtime did not quote-unquote come along. Its first upload predates the Now You're a Man cooking show by more than two months. Gerard also claims that Epic Mealtime took quote-unquote that market. 
Epic Mealtime's videos, besides already having eye-catching titles and thumbnails that strongly work with the theme of their channel, made the food look delectable. They were unique in showing the increase in calories, relying on excess, utilizing fast Wait pacing, and capturing well the cooking. They put, <laughs> they put a crunch wrap on a pizza. Oh yeah, yeah. They did a bunch of stupid <laughs> shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But the funny thing too is like how Gerard's sort of like coping. Like they took that market. Like you were sketch comedy. They really weren't. They were just like let's eat weird shit. Like you were like legitimate sketch comedy though. Like that's like, technically scary. not the market. Like, like, like I mean, it, it's basically mukbang before like you know they went to the obsessive amounts of food. Just yeah, the, like the weird shitty food. It is uncanny how many times that like Gerard revises shit and is like generally a scumbag before you even get to the scam that he's now known for. Yeah, he's the Hulk mm. Hogan of YouTube. Yeah. So you mean the Thomas Thomas Lockley? <laughs> 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 with the revisionist history. Yeah. yeah, but see, the thing is, Thomas Lockley was successful, so I gotta give him some props. And he told like, somebody he the truth. At least. I was the completionist, but I mean... I mean, at least uh... Lockley told at least once one version of the truth somewhere. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> And Are we gonna have process. a dark triad? George's like, cooking show had none of these things, and it was an entirely different market than Epic Meal Times. Yeah. No, it's uh, June does a really good job. Like there, there's no, you'll see. I mean, I don't think we're gonna get into that. No. And in a different video, Gerard states this. And a month before we launched, Epic Meal Time came out and was exact, almost the exact same show. These are my online gaming friends. We took a break out of destroying noobs on Black Mountain to destroying armies on YouTube. We got hit with a lot of copyright strikes early on, and so I was forced to take almost all the videos down. Here, Gerard is more precise in stating that Epic Mealtime preceded his show, but severely misrepresents his show by stating that it was almost the exact same show. The only similarities between these two are that they involve food. And then Gerard pivots to talking about copyright strikes and being forced to take the videos down, but doesn't expand on where the copyright strikes come from. Whatever the case, the cooking show failed. And not only was his channel later abandoned, all the videos were deleted. This is where his YouTube presence likely would have ended if it wasn't for John Jafari, known to the internet as John Tron, a popular retro game reviewer that expanded coverage to retro media and then to whatever he wanted to make. According to Gerard, they went to rival high schools, yet somehow became what? friends within that oh, yeah, time. Oh yeah, I forgot John Tron's the... John Tron's name was Jafari. <laughs> yeah, no, this is like a whole section of this I had no idea about. I didn't know about the John Tron link. Yeah, you know what's funny is that, I, you know that old like fucking joke rap is like, my name is Jafar, I come from Afar. You yeah, know? yeah. I'm, su I'm surprised John Tron didn't like do a, a parody of it. It's like, my name is Jafari, I came from Atari. <laughs> 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 oh my god you know what i really kind of find <laughs> ironic his last name's jafari but he had some uh pretty interesting takes on like white supremacy <laughs> well <laughs> like, he kept like ah, yeah that's a very nicholas fuentes of you <laughs> like, like i'm nicholas fuentes the mexican savior of the white race <laughs> yeah I still think like the funniest shit that ever happened to him was the whole like uh, the burning of the, the of the church in France or in Notre Dame, mm -hmm. where he's like being the hunchback for that um, one scene where he's going over like all the different um, massage tools or whatever from that one like Asian doctor. Oh yeah, <laughs> he posted the the day and like a couple hours later, the whole church goes up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like bad timing on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and people basically took the the uh, screenshot of where he's pretending to be the hunchback and they just put flames on the church. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> As a meme. <laughs> 12, with Gerard recently graduating from California State University, Fullerton, his previous channel failing, and being dissatisfied with his job at Best Buy, Gerard needed direction, and in a way, he got that from John Tron. Oh Trump. god, As Gerard explains, are to you. Best Buy, yeah. <laughs> John Tron wanted to live himself playing games with Aaron Could be. That could is be that, the link. Is that, is that the through line? Like, there's like something in Best Buy, when you enter it, it like re-scrambles your DNA into lockout. <laughs> yeah, it's called the Geek Squad. <laughs> Anson. Together, the two hosted the Let's Play channel, Game Grumps. The only issue was they did not have an appropriate location to do so, which is where Gerard comes in because he already had a streaming setup in his parents' home. 
So not only did he provide his home as the stream location, but was actively working in the background swapping consoles as games as the hosts unnecessary. But the stream eventually winded down and John Tron left. I'm not anyone famous, so I'm gonna turn this off. And the chat said, no, keep playing games. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Keep playing games. I'm going to bed and so should you guys. From here, Gerard states they accepted the audience's invitation to continue streaming and plays with John Tron, calling out of work the following day as a result of this. It was then, after quitting his job at Best Buy and with the guidance of Aaron Hansen, Gerard came up with a new idea. In the next few weeks, you're going to be receiving a new show called The Completionist. I am a completionist, and so each and every week, I'm going to bring you guys a completionist aspect of all these games, whether they be new games, old games, arcade games. This series at the He's end of 2011 was launched video. in the middle. So you can directly or indirectly blame JonTron for creating the completionist. Awesome. As if his tyranny against, against minorities wasn't enough. It's like in that video, he was fucking cross-eyed looking at that camera. Well, I mean, it's because he had to play games. Didn't you hear him? His <laughs> chat wouldn't let him go to bed. So he became, J he became Rango, that little chameleon. <laughs> Boots website. Normal Boots was a conglomeration of various gaming creators that did not feel secure with YouTube and their constant changing policies or how readily they would accept video takedown requests. After the soft launch of the series, Gerard decided to expand his catalog of videos to YouTube with his own channel that went under that one video gamer. He also launched his LLC under a similar name around this time. And so the first episode of The Completionist on YouTube was released in January of 2012. Yes! But first, this video there. is sponsored by War Thunder. Stop! War Th Stop! No! <laughs> video. Hell yeah, War Thunder. Me. War Thunder, like, no! Seriously. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you when this came out, you the commercials that they would have had would have had the fucking, do uh, what is it, the fucking body pillow shit in the ads. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is brand new. This is only like, yeah, July 9th. It's okay, War Thunder, I still love you. <laughs> I, I'm a game really separate to go play it now. <laughs> oh, man. It is game review videos from the long saturated market of game reviewers. The completionist angle was its own unique draw in that Gerard would focus on the entire game, and larger segments could be devoted to the difficulty or just trivia other videos may miss. But when writing the show, he felt that his comedy was lacking. That's when, as per the credits, Greg Wilmont, Gerard's friend, came in to fill that role. It played a little bit differently, but, you know, I wasn't entirely sure. Wait, wait, what the hell are you doing? What, 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 what do you mean? No, see, I do the reviews, you do the funny. The... Uh... <laughs> Welcome to my lair. I saw the way you floated through that door, but there's absolutely no way that you can... A lucky shot, but never... Guys! Gerard and Greg, having built up a hearty catalog of videos on normal boots, released videos day after day. These videos were released alongside other videos that fit the trends of the time, like top 10 videos or even just spin-off completionist videos where Greg was the host. Shortly after its launch, the series had already gotten enough notoriety that the developer of Super Meat Boy challenged the completionist to complete his game. And after over 18,000 deaths, Gerard did so in the following episode. That one video gamer, with its rapid releases and unique angle, made certain that it had a strong launch. By the end of January, less than a month of his existence, it already jumped up to nearly 4,000 subscribers. But as the pacing of uploads matched the actual production schedule of around one episode a week, the traction slowed and the growth became gradual. By the end of February, they had only gained 1,000 subscribers. Even so, this proved to Gerard that he had finally found his niche and was quick to embrace it. He could also be found streaming on Twitch where he both played games and hosted a podcast-style show, and on an additional Let's Play-esque channel known as Super Beard Bros. Week after week of consistent uploads meant that just a year later, Gerard had solidified himself within the game analyst community. He was a social creator who had been collaborating with channels of similar size, like game reviewer Pro Jared, who was also in Normal Boots. Mixed in with these collaborations were newer channels that were also video game adjacent. Hello, Gerard. Welcome to your bedroom. Matt Pat? It's good to see you. While Gerard was easily outgrown by his contemporaries, such as Game Theory or JonTron, his consistency, a key to YouTube's success, was what carried his channel's growth. Momentous as this was, Gerard's life in mid-2013 was taking a turn for the worst. And I saw this woman go from saying, give me that fork, give me that knife, give me that spoon, to give me that gray, give me that blue, give me that silver, to even give me that thing, I want that thing, to thing, 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 to nothing. Gerard's mother, 10 years after being diagnosed with frontal temporal dementia, had passed away. Gerard and family, bearing witness to her slowly regressing state and to her eventual passing, decided to allow her memory to live on through what would be known as the Open Hand Foundation. 
this charity is a 501c3, and it would be basically family operated, with the Hello family working hundreds of hours yearly to quote unquote evaluate charities to donate to, among other responsibilities. Virtually all the expenses went to the yearly golf charity that the Openham Foundation was now sponsoring. Quote, applicant estimates that it will expend approximately $23,000 to cover its expenses for each tournament resulting in a net profit of approximately $27,000. Unquote. In basic terms, the golf tournament was to happen annually. The proceeds would go to the Open Hand Foundation. The Open Hand Foundation would then distribute the money to whoever they saw fit. Gerard was a director and was in charge of marketing alongside the shared role of evaluating charities to donate to. It was also during this time that the completionist was seeing a major upswing in traction. Though there were no breakout videos, his catalog as a whole was getting increased interest enough to obtain an office. Why does it look different in here? We have an office now. You have a desk. What are you talking? Holy crap, we have an office. Unbeknownst to viewers, right as the channel was picking up in momentum, there was a major conflict between Gerard and Greg. The issues were never exactly specified, but there are implications that these conflicts were related to the direction of the show, or at least the background elements that eventually saw their friendship degrade. This came to a head February 2015, right after episode 120 of The Completionist. It's hard for me to announce that Greg Wilmot will no longer be a part of The Completionist or anything that one video gamer related. Greg, thank you so much and I'm sure everyone at home appreciates all the hard work that you've done for the past four years. Gerard thanking Greg for his time here. How much do you want to bet this is a lie? <laughs> oh, no, well, I, mean, I mean... Greg has come out and said that he, Gerard was basically a dick. Like... Yep. Yeah, this is just... It, it's crazy how many lies you have him telling up to this point. Yeah, it's just, I just also found it funny. Like, here's my friend Greg. I... I'm not entertaining, so I brought a ringer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's why I got you guys here. Oh, While yeah. simultaneously being the perpetrator of his departure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Infuriated Greg. To this, Greg tweeted out, quote, We are no longer friends. I did not leave willingly. Don't mistake, quote, unquote, diplomacy for pure fabrication. The loss of friendship has hurt most, unquote. But it did not end there. On Reddit, he gave a significantly long response. Quote, the truth is, Gerard and I's friendship had been rough for the year prior to the falling out. We had been slowly drifting apart. I'd like to get my work done quickly and efficiently, then be on my way home. However, I feel I was removed due to our failing friendship and punished by the business I had no protection in. Gerard and I never worked out a contract between each other because we were best friends, and rather naively, I assume we'd take care of each other in the end, as we did so many years prior. Unquote. The reactions to this were mostly of support. Though the comedic side of the show was now dead, the audience understanding that Gerard was continuing the show were happy enough with that. All over the internet, in relevant completionist posts, there are comments stating that Greg leaving the show diminished the quality of it, but also comments stating that they did not like Greg at all. These could be found in the same spaces. Ultimately, the departure of Greg saw far different reactions. Regardless, the fact is, the month that Greg stopped appearing in episodes was the same month that Gerard's viewership stagnated. This is not to say that Gerard was not attempting to improve his content, because by the end of 2015, he had hired a team to help with production, though he was still trying to expand his craft beyond the completionist. That's where Big Bad Bosses came in, his video game themed boy band. Big Bad Bosses! This led to his most viewed video ever, but nothing else was working. To expand on this, Gerard, seeing how his contemporaries were expanding their craft from video games to popular media to just even food, wanted a piece of that pie. MatPat was a great example of this, as he was taking his theme of theory videos and moving them onto film, which brought success overnight. Gerard sought to do the same, but his format was not enticing nor was it viable. MatPat could play with ideas and just research the elements around the related story. He takes a simple concept or happening in a movie and or show and expands on it greatly. But Gerard, carrying his completionist theme onto shows, had to watch all that was available. Being a completionist of a show just boils down to being a regular reviewer. This is to say that Gerard's gimmick could not be expanded beyond games, as it was not interesting, That's nor amazing. was it worth the time investment. This realize My What's gimmick that? is what you guys do at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the laziest shit in the world. And, like, this guy is, like, he's Pikachu shocked face, like, when shit doesn't work out for him. <laughs> what do you mean my gimmick of I watch TV show real good doesn't help? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, everybody watches I mean, the entire series. Like, I mean, would it be fair to consider this guy, like, you know, brown boogie? Uh, I, yeah. Or it's... tan boogie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, as much as I hate boogie, I'm going to give him something here. At least Francis was funny. Gerard doesn't even have that without Greg. Like, Gerard literally is nothing without the people around him. At least Boogie managed to get viral before Desi came in and made Francis better. You know what I mean? Like, mm. 
I can't believe I'm actually giving Boogie a point in something. <laughs> I, like, I feel like I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I will say that the completionist comedy, like that they cut, it, that June intercuts in, in here, like is actually kind of funny. Like I would watch his stand up routine. But that's also me taking stand up as that. Like, it doesn't have to be real. You're exaggerating on events. So, like, I don't know. It's very of the time. Yeah. It's very of that you time on YouTube. Because that's what, like, a majority of the, whoa, this is crazy. Sort yeah. Sort of, like, YouTube sort of humor of, like, back then. Like, not everything was unforgivable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, true. That period was funny as hell. I did talk with Huggy a couple times. Huggy was in here earlier, unless he fell asleep listening to me, which he could have. Realization that he may be stuck as the completionist for Gerard. Oh boy, what is next for the completionist? Well, I'll tell you what. I don't want to be completing games my entire life because that yeah. just seems a little bit daunting and depressing. Um, I'm working like on Boogie. a lot of big projects that aren't necessarily so focused in the realm of reviewing games. I think that because there are so many reviewers out there, it makes it hard to stand out. Gerard's goals to expand beyond his game reviews are not just sourced from the fear of pigeonholing himself, as most creators hold this fear that their craft is one note and their talents only exist in a single format. Gerard also has a task of expanding because he still deeply wants to please his father. I thrive off of doubt. I thrive on people telling me that I can't do something. It really drives me crazy. Um, and my parents every day would tell me, what are you doing? Go get a real job. Give up on this pipe dream, go do something else. And I kept telling them, no! Gerard, now in 2017, has been reputation. Donate that money, boy. <laughs> I kind of want to bring. It's like I kind of want to bring up something my music teacher once told me. I bet it. It's like it's uh, the only way how you become one note is if you play the same note. <laughs> and if yeah. you just keep, and if you just keep playing the brown note, you're always gonna be shit. Yeah. You know what's wild to me? This thing on screen right here. You seen how like dog shit he was yeah he landed mm -hmm. a video he landed an interview with reggie back when he was in like president of nintendo mm -hmm. like if that just goes to prove you can be the biggest lame tard on the internet you can still land some good ass like content and some like opportunities not only is he liked by virtually all content creators in his sphere, companies like Nintendo indirectly endorsed Gerard by allowing him extremely high-level interviews. This year, his views were picking up a bit, but then there was also this massive change. Greg had to come back. Not to the show, but to request all videos that included him, which was pretty much every completionist episode up to 120, be removed. I am damned if I do remove these videos, possibly legally damned if I don't. So, it's with a heavy heart that I announce that I am going to be removing all 120 episodes of The Completionist. Gerard allowed a month for viewers to archive videos before removing them. Whatever goodwill Greg had with The Completionist community was drained via this request. And as much as this hurt Gerard's channel, it also opened up the new opportunity to re-review the games he already played in his Completionist series, now as New Game Plus. It was possibly this, alongside continued traction, that reinvigorated his channel and bumped his viewership from hovering around 3 million a month to around 4 million a month. Also, in 2017, Gerard's story on Story Collider aired. The topic was on his mother and FTD. Usually, someone who's diagnosed with FTD uh, lasts about six and a half months, uh, mostly due to malnutrition, just not getting enough food, not eating enough, not being present uh, in the moment. Though Gerard was on a platform that emphasizes science and storytelling, Gerard was only focused on the latter. The average life expectancy, as seen on the AFTD website, is 7 to 13 years. It is practically universally understood that the life expectancy... So literally, like, initially starting off, the whole basis for this shit is a lie. <laughs> Again, yeah. it's like yeah. boogie cancer bullshit. <laughs> I mean, you only have a few years, guys. That's yeah. how bad this cancer, you know. Months. Well, it, Months it, at one point with him, too. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like I understand what he's trying to do, right? Like, like my mom was so strong, like she held out so long, because I understand. Like, I'm the same way with my mom, who's like, you know, battling a, I mean, a fatal her, illness. But like, her, come on. his mom's version of FTD was it, like, if he was going off that time frame, it, it seems like it had to be like a more advanced case or a more aggressive case. Oh, but wait, it gets better. He lies more. For those that have yeah. FTD is several years, and the leading cause of death is not malnutrition, though that does play a part. 
Still, it is nearly unanimous that the average life expectancy is around 7 years and the leading cause of death is pneumonia. It is clear that either Gerard got his facts severely wrong or he is lying on the spot to make himself look good. My mom was a strong as hell woman and she went down fighting every single step of the way. And more importantly, uh, she is the longest lasting survivor of to, to date with someone who's been diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. They gave her six months. She said, screw you, I'm going to live 15 years. Also a strong. Okay. Hold, hold <laughs> yeah. so basically, Her she stuff. survived the same sort of like usual diagnosis. Yes. It'd be like if Boogie was like, I'm so strong, I survived cancer, and he lives like 19 years with his 20 year <laughs> cancer. Like, okay, like, I understand you're sad about your mom. Yeah. But, like, come on. Yeah, you're, you're actively mean, making your mom a superhero for no fucking reason. Yeah, she went down swinging. The only way how I could see he could apply that terminology to her is if she was fighting with every orderly possible. It's like, who are you people? Wham, wham, bam, you know? I don't want to go back in the box. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, sw just throwing hands with people and, and fucking <laughs> nurse outfits and everything. I mean, I'm sure one of those nurses also found Consuela. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, it's just like Boogie. He's like over exaggerating this shit. Yeah. Yeah. He literally like there's an insane part in this. Like, what would you say is a lot of therapists? Like for an individual to have? Um, depends. Like which field, like behavioral, psychological, just, like just um... in general. Like if you were talking about somebody who goes to a lot of therapy, what would you say is a high number of therapists to see? I'd say about seven. He sees exactly that, I believe. It was like really? five to seven. Yeah. Okay. Because I he mean, lays out all most... of them and it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. He actually has a a therapist ringleader to fucking like actually co like yeah, commingle data. Yeah, yeah. Like across other caretakers. Across he's like got a, a therapist handler handling his therapist data from one therapist to another <laughs> <laughs> i'm not kidding that's his explanation for shit at one point like i was so, like so what you're holy saying, fuck, so bro. You're saying he, he has a psychological portal manager right yeah <laughs> yeah he has more therapist than boogie and boogie <laughs> arguably needs it a lot more than he does <laughs> Like, cause I'm, I'm just trying to sit here and think of like, how, why do you need that many? Because like a lot of therapists like can do multiple things, yes. right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and it's not like he's married. So like you can rule out like marriage therapy and like couples shit like that. So I can see maybe one like with his mom passing like a trauma grief specialist and then maybe one for like depression and then maybe a third for like family issues because it sounds like he has a lot of issues with his dad. But I can't yeah. see any more than that that another just general therapist couldn't help you with. Yeah. Well, I mean. There's, he's probably got like a grief counselor for like the shit with his mother at one point. I don't think he would have it after this long. He probably still has like a behavioral therapist. Then he's got a, um, a general therapist, which is like the one who prescribes the drugs. And then he's probably got, you died out. I want to see your guys' list of like thoughts on like the therapist, like who it could be. So. Wait, did I cut out for a sec? You did, yeah. I, I didn't know if you heard okay. me. Sorry. I, I only picked up halfway. I didn't know if you guys heard all I said. I got up to a behavioral therapist. Oh, I was going to say like a general psychiatrist to prescribe drugs and then like a neuropsychologist to diagnose them with other fucking disorders. Okay. And what are your thoughts, Jim? Like, good talk. Claim considering oh, wait, the damn. I, was I was talking that whole fucking time and I was muted. God damn it. I'm here having a conversation with my fucking self. But no, like um you wouldn't you wouldn't need another therapist for that because generally psychiatrists are the same people who would prescribe your disorders. So that would overlap. Okay. I'm unmuted this time. So. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're like, good talk. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, yeah. And then I like feel my mic. I'm like, oh, I've been muted for the last like three fucking minutes. Like, you heard nothing of what I said. Like, okay. 
Well, you know, good fucking co-host. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Boomer Jim. Boomer Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna da, 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 and play it off. <laughs> yeah, I was well, like, oh, I Jim like might have just walked now. away. <laughs> no, I was here talking like a fucking moron. Like, oh man, regular therapist. I'm not sure what else. Okay, um, yeah, I'll be honest. None of y'all got them. Like, it's gonna be funny when we get to that section. Jesus sources Christ. state that people have lived up to 20 years with the disease. There is something fundamentally wrong with Gerard. The silver lining is that these statements here don't really affect anything. This story reached a limited audience, so Gerard's lies were hardly impactful. Though it does put into question why he was chosen as a director of the Open Hand Foundation while not being up to date with the facts around FTD. This spelled trouble when he further invested into the charity through his own fundraising campaign. I want to do a big charity stream, and it is called Indyland. Yeah. It's called Indie Land. <laughs> this is a charity stream designed about indie games for indie games, promoting indie games, more importantly, why we love games. While it was clear that Gerard was incompetent, at the very least, this event was beneficial for all parties. Though the goal was set at raising $25,000, Indie Land brings much yeah, more Gerard than that. The Our final <laughs> amount for Indie Land, all the money tally and everything together, was $55,102. Celebrity Jamie Lee Curtis even got herself involved as her daughter was an employee of Gerard's. Everything was looking well for the completionist and its ventures. I don't want to say this is the year of the completionist because it's like a weird thing to say. Hashtag rip year of Luigi. But this year has been our most successful year. It's just nonstop. We're going to hit a million subscribers in a couple of weeks. And that's that's something special. A unique boon that continued to aid the completionist was his clean reputation. This was absolutely necessary when it came to his most viewed videos, which were oftentimes Nintendo games. His top two non-music videos are on Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey and boast 4.2 million and 2.7 million views respectively. While it is not irregular for coverage of Nintendo games to perform well on YouTube, it is uncommon for Nintendo to work with creators. A benefit of this was that Gerard was able to receive games like Super Mario Odyssey early, and being that his gimmick is not so much reviewing the game, but achieving full completion, though the definition of completion can vary from game to game. This is to say that Gerard needs much more time than the average creator to release his video. The window of interest tends to close the further the video releases from the game's release date. And while it is somewhat common for review copies to be given out, Gerard's privilege extends beyond that realm. Like for a few other creators, there was a master trainer named after him in a Pokemon game. That and Gerard was also being directly sponsored by Nintendo. This Wait, video really? is sponsored and approved. Yeah. Yeah, no, he had a lot of shit with Nintendo and even indie games and stuff, as you'll find out. Yeah. But seriously, they had a master trainer named after him? Yep. Yeah, like if I go back yeah. just a little bit, you can actually see. Here, I'll drop the Ace uh, Trainer which Gerard. Which would this be? Oh, I, that I have no idea. I don't have that level of autism. <laughs> it, it looks Dude, like it would like be like on Let's the go. Switch. It's Let's Go Pikachu, I think. Uh, well, I don't know. That, that would explain the Pikachu on the shoulder and shit. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it was on the Switch versions. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah, because of the graphics, that's why that was like, which Switch game did it come out on? Because <laughs> I know that that like there is no graphic and shit like that for um the uh, Violet and and uh that because I have that on Switch, so mm. it would have. To, I think it is Let's Go because it okay. looks like it. I have no idea. I still play Blue. <laughs> <laughs> which, I mean, you are not the only one. No, I mean Blue is good. Blue is good. <laughs> I started with red, but you know, blue and uh, uh, I think I've got gold. Oh, well, I started out. I started out with. I started, out with, I started <laughs> out with gold. Then I got the yellow Pikachu version. Oh, yeah. And then you... the next game I got was like, uh, I think it was Ruby. Yeah, I don't think I went that far. That <laughs> blue and gold. <laughs> like, I never went into the DS games until like a few years ago, so I kind of missed out like on a bunch of different generations. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't see any of that stuff. I ended at you Game know, Boy Color. Yeah, it, it's sad because like if you look at it, like the the quality of the games now, like you have like uh, back then, in order to fit uh, Kanto in gold and silver, they like worked throughout the night debugging it and slimming it down and now they just fucking just shit out like games that barely function it's like, <laughs> like, like how it fucking changed right yeah like oh, i mean man. not even all the features worked in like the gold and silver era like yeah the like, curt balls were like fucking shit yeah. yeah 
game. That end, Gerard was also being directly sponsored by Nintendo. This video is sponsored and approved by Nintendo. This felt necessary for Gerard's growing company that was looking to expand into the creator space by offering services to creators like managing the merchandise sales. All of these aspects were reliant on Gerard's glowing reputation. That's why in 2019, when Pro Jared was going through a scandal involving heavy accusations that at the time were not challenged, Gerard, seeing as he collaborated with Jared in the past, made a tweet stating he did not condone Jared's actions and donated a combined total of $15,000 to three charities. Also attached were the receipts received from each individual charity. If he donated this much in response to a friend's scandal, how much would he theoretically donate in response to his own scandal? Luckily, Gerard's reputation was so solid that this question could practically only ever be asked in theory. In 2019, Gerard was proud to, quote, report that Indyland 2019's preliminary total earnings are $109,418, unquote. With now 19 employees allegedly working under the completionist company that won Video Entertainment, it was now more important than ever to continue this momentum. But 2020, YouTube had other plans. At the beginning of this year in January, something changed on the YouTube front. YouTube algorithms. Surprise, surprise, right? Something changed. And my channel went from performing as it normally does to not performing as it normally does. This man is so completely wrong. I have no idea how he made it to the level that he's at and not knowing a fucking thing about analytics. Don't like lark. the the like smallest bit about analytics. Like I I genuinely don't know. Well, he got there through dumb luck and just being able to get like Reggie. Yeah. And and just knowing people like that was it like he was basically kind of in a way like minorly astroturfed huh what gerard is complaining about in this video was a dip in views starting january 2020 except that, that is false looking back at his social blade for the month of january 2020 shows that his channel did not only perform well it also performed virtually the best it had ever per month at 6.4 million views Looking through a social blade also shows that the single month that had only ever performed better was January of 2019. February 2020, however, does show a massive dip in views of nearly half, but that is only compared to January. When looking back, hovering around 4 million is highly common for his channel. This is not the only time Gerard talks about this dip. There was also this panel at PAX East 2020 minute, where he believes that, he knows- showing 2019, not 2020. It's showing all of it. It's showing over a duration. 18 to- uh, Yeah, but through he 19. says in 20, he said January 2020, not- 2019 uh, it may have been a misspeak because right there it shows january 20 but when he's going over it he shows january yeah you're right of he does have a misalignment in data there okay i was wondering because i was like wait a minute why are we going over the 19 numbers and but, he's using that as a comparison i'm almost wondering like side side. i'm almost wondering though if that's not something wrong on social blade because if you look he broke the six million mark and he says this is like one of the only times that his channel breaks that high. And if you go back here, yeah, 6.4 million. Yeah, do so you think it, it's it, just an issue with the graphic? It could be an yeah, issue with the chart. Usually, well, no, because the way how he's doing these animations, I'm wondering, I don't know. Maybe, because usually when you do these kinds of animations, you have to enter the data. Like, I mean, there's so much you could do with a screenshot to animate it. I think he's tracing over top of it with these lines. I think this is just mm. generally lines over top of a graphic. I think the chart itself is wrong because everything else lines up. Like when you go all the way back to here, like the dip, the other spikes and everything else are, mm. are lined up right here. But wait, if you back that up just a little bit to the one where it was like correctly labeled 2020 right there, he cracks like seven and a half million. Yeah, and and in they haven't gotten to that so. in the timeline yet. But like for this point, it's correct. So and it's like if you look back, he wouldn't have been that high. He was significantly lower. Oh wait a minute, been... that's views. I thought he was. I thought they were talking about subscribers. This is his subscribers. No wait, this okay, is views. Maybe... Sorry, monthly gained views. Okay, and then... so when it shows. This is total views per month. Yep. I don't know how they how that oversight got left in though. I don't know. Cuz it's the same flow, but the charts in the previous one were correctly labeled. Oh. Constant. Well, wait, wasn't that if you go back, one is total views and then one was like gained. Total views? Yeah, monthly. monthly oh, gained. okay. But then that still doesn't like make sense. 
because like she shouldn't like line up for the same month and the same year at that point. Well, I mean, I assume that some months have more visibility, so like it will have a greater spike on that chart. Okay, than, like, why, why don't total. we just why don't we just back up to the beginning of this segment? Because I think we might be missing some context. That is false. Looking back at his social blade for the month of January 2020 shows that his channel did not only perform well, it also performed virtually the best it had ever per month at 6.4 million views. Looking through a social blade also shows that the single month that had only ever performed better was January of 2019. February 2020, however, does show a massive dip in views of nearly half, but that is only compared to January. When well, looking back, hovering around 4 million is highly common. It's one misspeak on a date on a year. Okay, and the graphs are like fucked up too. So, nope, yeah, nope. The, good, graphs the graphs are correct. The graphs are correct. It's June misspeaking on a year, one t one specific year. So he says that he's talking about right here, this this high point that where it gets to six point four, uh, mm -hmm. right here, is January yeah. twenty twenty. Right. So this ah, <laughs> war thunder. <laughs> Let's talk about Enterprise again. <laughs> Where was that? Right there. So this graph right here, he's saying that the only time his channel has done better was January 2019. Okay. And he actually misspeaks saying in January 2020 here. So either he showed the wrong graphic here or he was referring back to this dot. Gotcha. Okay. So either way, like it's on off. par. It matches. The data flows. February 2020, however, does show a massive dip in views of nearly half, but that is only compared to January. When well, looking back, hovering around 4 million is highly common for his channel. This is not the only time Gerard talks about this dip. There was also this panel at PAX East 2020 where he believes he knows what caused it. We're going to go ahead and scale back and do six videos a month, and then when we do a seventh or eighth video, it's going to be a different video that has a different vibe to it that is a lot more premium that feels like the completionist, but the twist. In me doing that, it's been two months, my channel has dropped 45% in views. And all I did was, and I didn't, I just, I, I just didn't post two videos. That's all that's changed this year. What Gerard is pinning the blame on here is where he would typically upload eight videos, he was uploading less than that to focus on quality and experimentation. The facts are that he uploaded seven videos in January, except in this case, as shown, this month was his second base performing month despite missing one upload. But what about February? This month, the month that had shown the dip, which was not a dip because it was still in the same range of Gerard's typical views, had also the typical eight videos. Gerard is either lying or is woefully unaware of his upload schedule. Perhaps he was thrown off by the 8th video uploaded on the 29th of February because it was a leap year. What this all means is that Gerard effectively uploaded a 24 minute video complaining about nothing. This also includes his complaints about the Persona 5 episode. <laughs> point to how long to beat, the average completionist time of Persona 5. This, this was like, holy shit, like this was such bad time management on this one. Includes his complaints about the Persona 5 episode. And you're about to see a lot more time the, not, wait, not light the up. 500 the 500 hour journey can't you just complete that game in like 30 he'll explain but yes well, but it's... you're talking about completionist level and then he's going to get into the detail of completionist level that gerard was trying to obtain it's so bad too because like it's not attesting to new game plus where a lot of the slower social systems you'll already have the stats so he actually basically... gets into that you so June, June does it very well and shows you what it should have been. And then versus Gerard's time, he completely bungled this. Uploaded a 24 minute video <laughs> complaining about nothing. This also includes his complaints about the Persona 5 episode. According to How Long to Beat, the average completionist time of Persona 5, meaning all the trophies, would take approximately 173 hours. Gerard wanted to go above and beyond by collecting all the love interest gifts. The issue with this was that you can only get one love interest gift per run. With there being 10 unique love interests and additional cutscene where you romance all 10 at the same time, that amounts to beating a rather large game 10 times. I guess the reason why I'm bringing that up is because uh, I, I, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I do not want to play this game anymore. Though he claims he started playing it since it was released and was further challenged to complete it after Indie Land raised $100,000 in 2019, after 500 hours of gameplay, Gerard could not persist. I do not want to play this game anymore. So he issued a poll to his viewers asking what completion meant for this game. 91% stated that just getting all trophies is fine, which is what Gerard settled on when he released the video in May of 2020. This single video is bursting with issues surrounding time management, business sense, and fact checking. To start, point one and three can be bundled into one major issue, which is time to beat a run. 
This is more or less correct, if only considering the first fresh run. Average playthrough of Persona 5 is over 85 hours, with my very first one tracking on hard mode taking me 110 hours. But with New Game Plus, if run on easy, and skipping dialogue, as Gerard said he was doing, it should, according to multiple different accounts, take 30 to 40 hours. With Gerard's initial okay, run, so I, 110 hours... I guess 30 hours, like... <laughs> but that's on the New Game Plus. So it would have been his, his original 80... Plus 30 plus so on so forth. It should have taken Gerard around those oh, 500 okay. hours to be the game as he wanted. If we're being generous with numbers and assuming that Gerard is absolutely inefficient with his additional playthroughs and truly takes <coughs> 85 hours per run, that would be around a thousand hours. Yet he overshoots this with a number he could have only made up. And I was starting to realize this episode would never get made and I'd have to spend well over 1200 hours to do the stupid task that I gave myself. While these are all minute, You're rather just unimportant so lies, incompetent. You know, <laughs> he's really yeah, bad was, at math okay well i i beat persona 5 like my first run was like 50 hours so where's the extra 30 hours coming from <laughs> like what did you just get stuck like did you not know how to google well like, like it's not freaking hard here's the funny I mean, thing was... is that is that if you do the math 10 runs of persona 5 even at his 85 hours would only be 850 hours. He added in, in his estimate, an additional 350 hours. Yeah, that's probably because he gets stuck and doesn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I was, kind of ex I was kind of expecting a Donga Tribe joke from you at some point in this. This would have been the perfect, you know, <laughs> spot to drop it. There are not the persona people. I don't know how. Not know how mementos don't understand, don't understand social system. <laughs> Good job. Me not know how ten. get ultimate persona. <laughs> <laughs> Me take ye five hundred hours. Me take five hundred <laughs> hours. Does DLC count? <laughs> uh, but by his logic, he should have done almost. Was it like uh, four complete runs at that time at 500 hours, like and some into a fifth run, mm -hmm. or no five five total runs plus some into a sixth run? Sorry, I I can't even wrap my head around it because like I have like 160 hours on Persona Five Royal, which has <laughs> extra content. That's like three runs. <laughs> like what are you doing gerard like are you just sitting there like like me see pretty lady me need to touch pee pee like, like what are you no. counting it with the time when you're jacking off to the 16 year olds or what like what the fuck well he's like, like no, he's more like me used to atari 2600 game not this new fingle dongle <laughs> Dialogue option gives Gerard many pause. <laughs> oh my Dialogue god. Dialogue option gives Gerard many pause. <laughs> I just I'm wondering if he's not working off the D Max concept where he considered like his render time, aka his sleep time into this. <laughs> and just fell asleep like, with I, the game running. He fell asleep on the menu and like, that counts. Like, what, well, wait a minute. What if it was a technical issue he was bitching about? Like what D Max was doing, where it's like a boogie's file size was like thir was like thirteen gigabytes. Yeah. Wings was like three hundred and eighty. Yeah. And shit like that. Like, I can't edit Lockout Live. Like it's literally bigger than my hard drive. Like yeah. I literally can't save Wings as file. <laughs> <laughs> Demonstrate once more that Gerard is a liar, that. and like not only that, the file got corrupted, and he had to replay it, so he just added that time in. Oh my god! <laughs> that he has terrible like, I have to imagine that's he gets like, all the way, be... almost all the way through gameplay, realizes that he's already done this run. <laughs> yeah, like, he's, like, it's either that or a corrupt save. Like any of those would be valid fucking like excuses for the five hundred hours. <laughs> Born lies, it does demonstrate once more that Gerard is a liar. And not only that, he has terrible business sense. Why even embark on such a large project with such an absurd self placed challenge for a video that only got 1.3 million views? That places it at the 30th most viewed video, yet was a video that took Jun arguably man. the longest to make. As for the rest <laughs> of the year, Gerard continued his indie Oh, wait till we get into the uh, $20,000 one. That Gerard, video. Not internet. 
Gerard not internet people not sure how to donate. <laughs> well, Me clicky button, nothing happened. This this hasn't quite got to it yet, but that's totally separate from Indie Land. There's like a twenty thousand dollar like poor that's financial decision yeah. on his yeah. on his end. <laughs> Land charity and his viewership remained the same. January 2021, following the pattern of previous years, was where he peaked in overall monthly viewership, this time at 7.5 million views. A top 10 video about the top 10 worst achievements was responsible for this peak. This is the perfect example of a low-effort, high-performing video that does not sacrifice quality. It still has Gerard's personality that directly relates to the subject matter of the video. However, after this month, his viewership would see a true decline. Never again would he see beyond 5 million views, and after February, that was 4 million. Gerard continued to look elsewhere for whatever could build his empire. And I think the next step for us is my ultimate goal is I want to get into the video game industry, gearing the company, you know, using the completionist brand to get people excited for games and to help indie developers who otherwise don't have an audience, just give them a place to grow. Um, you know, that's a big reason why Indie Land's been so successful is because we're taking indie developers who are usually these one to, to eight people teams that have no funding. Gerard at this time was experiencing difficulties all around. Newly added, or rather appropriately diagnosed as he has had it since birth, was a syndrome that was reeling back with issues. After 33 years of being diagnosed with spinal hemangioma, I was actually diagnosed with something called <clears throat> Blue Rubber Bleb Nevis Syndrome. Blue Rubber Bleb Nevis Syndrome is a rare disorder that consists mainly of abnormal blood vessels affecting the skin or internal organs, usually the gastrointestinal tract. The disease is characterized by the presence of fluid-filled blisters, blebs, as visible circumscribed chronic lesions, nevis. Gerard would need surgeries to quell these symptoms. While he had more than a fighting chance, the newest thing that he was involved in could at best be described as hopeless. Comcast was looking at the rising gaming content sphere and reduced that G4, an old defunct network famously focused on gaming before there was any competition, uh. could compete in this industry today. The way they were going about this was greenlighting several shows that made G4 popular, such as X-Play and Attack of the Show. These would be hosted on YouTube and would sometimes be found live on Twitch. The only value this holds today would be in the original host to see where they are now, which they did and it performed decently. But relaunching it as it was would be virtually impossible as it would have to compete with long-established content creators with teams of just a few people that have cut into their niche audiences that also know how to prioritize profits versus production costs. G4, on the other hand, had its own studio, it was paying for the hosts that were willing to come back, and though reluctant, brought on Gerard. G4 was also utilizing their dead channels with dead subscribers, and so Gerard's reveal trailer got a measly 36,000 views. And Gus Johnson, another popular creator that was also part of the G4 team, was getting tens of thousands of views where his main channel was getting anywhere from 1 million to 5 million views. Gerard's own G4 produced show, God of Work, where he plays a video game character set in an office space, was performing even worse. This is considering the amount of money that went to the production crew and the various actors and props involved. Even with Comcast's high-end you know, slate of advertisers, this was a catastrophe. If I remember correctly, G4 existed right around the time Halo came out, right? Like the yes. original Combat mm -hmm. Evolved? Yeah. Okay, because I have like, the, this is like a little side thing. I have this fucking bonus disc with demos on it for the OG Xbox. Yep. And on it has like a Halo tournament from g4 i believe when they had um arena huh was it was it arena i i, I don't know but it was like 32 players they knocked down into six uh two teams of 16 and they would knock them down to eight then to four then to two and one of the hosts was um oh fuck what's his name from star trek um shut up wesley <laughs> or whatever oh oh uh patrick shatner? stewart was it Who? shatner Patrick Stewart. No, no, it was the guy who's being told to shut up. Oh, uh, Wesley. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton, Will yeah. Wheaton. Yeah, Will Wheaton. He was hosting it. So I wonder if that was the same thing or if I'm thinking of something else. Hmm. Side tangent, Microsoft, I'm still mad as a middle schooler. When I saw the development of the original Xbox, I was promised a cup holder in the center of the console and we never got that. <laughs> I'm over here doing math, and I realized <laughs> why it took him so long for Persona. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you played Persona? I never have. Okay, Sam so has. Pers Persona 5, basically, like, the Phantom Thieves of Hearts, so they go around and they steal, like, these tainted desires of people who are corrupted by them right yeah it took him so long because he probably was sitting there and a calling card was slipped under his door and he probably pissed himself because he <laughs> thought the phantom thieves were really targeting him <laughs> he probably pissed himself scared oh my god i'm still mad about that cup holder though i never forgot that 
<laughs> like, seriously, like not to go off on another tangent, but Sin's like original like OC or not OC, but like his um channel icon. Yeah. His character yeah. is based off of Joker. Yeah, because I remember from the Persona the, games. Yeah, the hmm. calling card. Mm-hmm. It's actually a really, really good game. I've never played it, but he's never really talked much about it. I mean, I, I might be biased because like one of my favorite games of all time is Persona 3. Which <laughs> I'm extremely bitter about the remake. Oh boy. Are you as bitter <laughs> as I am about that cup holder? <laughs> <laughs> Probably more because I'm unstable. <laughs> Well, I mean, the cup holder had to go, Patrick. How else was it going to, like, function? Like, They're a multi-billion dollar company that can make it work. <laughs> I've figured yeah, it out. Maybe, <laughs> make well, a shallow cup holder. Built... <laughs> yeah, well, maybe if it was built into, the cu- built into a car. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I wanted my goddamn cup holder, okay? <laughs> yeah, but would you really want, like, your drink Let's being see. used as, like, a heat sink? You know, it might have performed better, okay? We don't know. We'll never know. You want to know why? They never did it. <laughs> I mean, that's like the Look. KFC home console. I don't know if you heard about that. <laughs> I, have, that I just did the probably. math. I would have found out about this when I was around, yeah, 13 or 14. That's roughly like 22 years. I've never forgotten that. <laughs> I remember like reading about it in a gamer magazine. I mean, <laughs> seriously, I mean, I've modded those consoles like to hell and back, and it's just, just like those things generate a lot of heat. Who knows? With the drink option, it could have maybe re- remained a little bit cooler. Yeah, would operate it a little better, okay? <laughs> There's no way how your cup holder would have worked as a radiator. <laughs> you don't know if it never happened. <laughs> yeah, well, could you imagine that, though? Like, little Timmy gets his chocolate milk, and he goes to play Halo on Xbox Live, and he takes a sip, and it's all warm, and he gets, like, E. coli, and then the like, fucking mom sues Microsoft because you infected her kid because the, the Xbox heated his fucking milk into chocolate cottage cheese <laughs> like yeah i don't I, that just screams want... like bad idea timmy shouldn't have <laughs> you know what <laughs> that's what the, that's what it was for though you literally timmy should have been better at fucking halo okay <laughs> <laughs> maybe he would be better if he didn't have e coli oh, it'd be better if he just put mountain dew in the cup yeah that's true oh we need my to god yeah <laughs> <laughs> We need to buggy it. <laughs> Why are you guys gonna ruin my my passionate thing that never happened? Okay. <laughs> Does it never happen? I mean, yeah. I thought Microsoft would have ruined it more than I did. But okay. I mean, you do you. <laughs> Microsoft can't work. It can't like design a decent OS system. What makes you think they could design a cup holder? <laughs> oh man, I have no idea why I've ever retained that in my head. I don't, I don't even know where the fuck I saw it. I mean, that's the first time I'm ever hearing of this. So. Yeah, I know. It's like, it, I, whatever, I, whatever Microsoft did to you, it must have been intense. This was like back when like the console was being designed. Like when they released sketches of it. So like this is really... I'll, I'll see if I can find it while this is played. Various actors and props involved. Even with Comcast's high-end slate of advertisers, this was a catastrophic failure brought on by the ignorance of a TV network that's traditional knowledge could not be translated into the online realm. Weekly, the budgets for the show would increase and decrease. There was no consistency in the studio, and changes in strategy of how to garner attention would happen on the fly. The max amount of viewers that the G4 stream got on Twitch was 64,000. In terms of television ratings, this is abhorrent. So its average viewership of 2,000 was a complete and utter failure. It did not help that the only way this content was reaching a larger audience was through controversial clips. But maybe later we'll get to talk about Crypto Beefcakes, which is a project that you tie an NFT to a Discord account, and then if you're a positive influence in a community, it actually inflates the value of your NFT. So heaven forbid we have avatars and communities that encourage people to be kind and supportive to increase the value of something. But apparently, that's the thing that gets me canceled today, is caring about a new technology and community. Well, you're all welcome. You're, that's you're arguing social credit score for an avatar. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, like, you're like, arguing I don't, for you know, a fucking could go wrong. scam. I don't know how that could go wrong. Like, yeah, all you would have to do is like have all these people just go into Discord and be like, "You're all fun and nice, and I love you all." Here, free nudes, and then like fucking 
<laughs> get like positive upvotes for your avatar, then you flip it. Like, do we really need that? Like, I mean, it seriously sounds like something Chris Tyson would do. Ew. <laughs> ew. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I am dying with all the, inside. With all the, like, the love you dad fucking messages back to it, he'd be making moolah. Yeah. No, I can <laughs> see it. I hate him so much. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know anymore. I just hate that. I hate the individual so much. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's okay to hate. I'm going to sleep fine tonight. To put things in perspective, these few comments did not affect the nope. result. G4's relaunch was doomed to fail. What it did do was give many channels ample opportunity to pick out these moments as the reason why G4 failed. The most common clip by far involved Prosk, a caster seen in game competitions who was known to stir up controversy and contempt in the communities he was involved in. Gerard pushing for yeah, a female lead bitch. for X Wave was oh my out God. Or Mun, or <laughs> but what the producers decided on was Prosk. No, no, she's Gerard detailed fucking that gross. they did not because she went into the League of Legends community, right? And was, like, slandering one of the other casters as, like, a sex abuser and shit. And she, like, literally fucking does that. And then and then anytime Thorzane would, like, or Thorzane would open his mouth, like, she even says it in her little rant. We'll take any chance to slight him because you proved that you were wrong, you fucking piece of garbage. Unalive yourself. In Minecraft. Sorry. Okay. I'm really. Oh, I mean, G4 already unalived <laughs> itself. Yeah, good. In real world. <laughs> good. Take take note. Repeat. <laughs> I'm all angry now. I'm angry. <laughs> I'm struggling to find it, but it was something similar to this. Like, there was a bunch of sketches like this in a magazine. <laughs> did you, did you gaslight yourself into no, this I, existing? No, like... because, like, there's enough people searching for it that it was a search term without me ever looking into this on this computer. This might really? be like the Mandela effect where you all have this shared Hold memory. <laughs> that, that first drawing right there, like that's the fucking Sega Genesis, right? Or Sega CD, whichever was the last one they ever made. What, this here? Yeah. No, no, there was like, one of the Xbox it, sketches. Like yeah, there yeah, was the a bunch of design back. sketches like this and one yeah. of them featured a cup holder in the top. I'm not kidding. I well, can't remember what magazine. Tray, but... No, I'm just saying, no, like, it, it was literally because right they had it. Uh, because that one, I want to say they had it side disc. Hmm. Because I, what I was going to point out here is like that right there, that design sketch is like one of the few uh, pieces of evidence that they uh can link back to how Xbox like was like the uh successor to Sega or the console because a lot of the shit that Sega introduced on their last console made it into the Xbox. So this is like from the Ethernet port, the actual everything. original official Xbox magazine. That might be where I'm remembering it from. Let me see. I'll keep playing. Not have time to chemistry test or see how all the hosts were actually interacted. So the hosts were unaware of how they would present certain topics or how to interact with each other on camera like friends would. There was also a looming annoyance of the comments that were flowing in. Some stating that Gerard ate Morgan Webb and other derogatory comments that are normal and expected in the online space. But the host, like right, Frost, who typically had a separation and now has. <laughs> Wait, Gerard ate Morgan Webb? That's considered a derogatory comment? <laughs> Are you Morgan, kidding you have, me? You have the misogyny, you have the fat man. Like, it hits on like a couple different, like, protected classes. Well, I mean, seriously, that's a fucking joke. That ain't a derogatory comment. Dude, I just love the idea of like Morgan Webb being like, I'm glad to be back at X Play. And Gerard <laughs> Gerard picks Ethan. up a fork, cannibal frenzy, and just dashes at Morgan Webb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, June. <laughs> Happy to deal Webb. with an active chat, took it upon herself to voice her frustration in an extremely poor fashion. Every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us. I can see you. Without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. It's somehow... Talk to him, Frost! Be your and that's just too. obvious sexism. You don't need to explicitly objectify women or declare that you hate women to be sexist. Just go ahead and check out Thorne's latest meltdown on Twitter for some spark notes. Frost's near a three-minute yeah, long yeah, rant. Yeah, after you falsely accused him of sexual abuse. Yeah, no, he's the bad guy, you fucking bitch. I mean, seriously, the only thing that's bangable about her is her fucking head, and that's usually against the wall. With a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Going full on Mario. 
Being aggressive and overly generalizing by addressing the entire audience for the actions of few, and those that made those comments no doubt got what they wanted, which was a reaction. This discourse, while not entirely against Frosk, was not very beneficial for G4. It shrouded them in controversy, though that still mattered very little because they stood on their course of failure. They lasted about one year as the closure was announced on October 16th, 2022. Not only was this how the internet at large found out, it was also how Gerard and the remaining G4 team found out that they had lost their jobs. This news came shortly after the completion of second worst performing month in the past couple of years. 2022 also had the worst performing month where views for his channel dipped under 1 million. This was quickly turning around to be the worst year for the completionist and his company so far. 2023 was truly a different beast in terms of what it did to Gerard. It really felt so personal. And uh, at that same time that G4 exploded, I lost several sponsors. Mm -hmm. I was making that eShop video and I was like, people wouldn't touch me because of the controversy oh, at the time. time. Uh, I had two employees uh, quit slash I had to fire one, not because I wanted to fire. I, I, I made it a goal as a business owner to never fire an employee. That was mm -hmm. my my number one promise to myself, I would never fire or get rid of an employee for any reason. And I was looking at my finances and going, oh, I don't have enough money to do this. I think we could, in this situation, say let go. Right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was the employee <laughs> down? Right. Like, hold up. Was the employee that you fired your barber? <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'd be like, I will never fire anyone that turns out like his editor like raped a kid. That is, like, by oh, the way, single-handedly the dumbest shit you can say as a business owner is I will never fire anybody. Well, yeah, imagine. It's so like, like okay, I embezzle do. I embezzle ten thousand dollars from your company. You're not gonna fire me? <laughs> well, imagine like the whole Chris Tyson thing. What happens if something like that is like yeah, it's like his editor fucks a kid. Yeah. Oh well, I don't like pedophilia, but I I told Shane I'd never fire him, so, uh... I stand yeah. by, my friends. One year later, you're fired. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just told him and Looking said no. Jimmy. Let go. If what Gerard states is true, his finances are now very tight. Whatever side projects he had were apparently not enough to pick up the loss of ad revenue. Though Gerard was still endlessly experimenting with videos to no avail, he decided on a different type of video that was extremely risky when considering his company's financial this is the stupid fucking choice right here. You want to talk about a dumb fucking decision for no fucking reason? This. Like, what, the e shop? The, the Wii U. He buys, I bought every Wii U game on the eShop before it closed. I disagree with you. The cost of this alone? It, well, the, co the cost of it, yeah. I mean, but, but he was trying to it. set up like... Wasn't he trying to set up like an archival, like for game preservation? Yeah, but think about it. It's brilliant. You buy the entire Wii shop, then he makes content out of it, gives himself a tax write off because technically it's a business expense now, makes the content about all of the games and then donates them. So you get to double dip your finances and you get to be good guy Gerard. That would have made sense, but he's an idiot. But it didn't play out that way. I know, that's why I'm saying like it's a brilliant idea. It just poorly executed. He's an Ignore absolute idiot. There. <laughs> because yes, GG, yes, he was trying to do it as an archival thing. What would you do if you're doing something as an archival thing? Archive maybe, it. Uh, maybe maybe I'll... check check with the place you're gonna donate it to to make sure they can accept it. I mean he could set up his own. Like, I mean He could that the first but time. that was his whole gimmick here was I'm going to send all this stuff to the fucking games Video game museum. museum. Like, yeah. yeah. The internet archive. Yeah. State. With the announcement of the closure of the Wii U and 3DS eShop, Gerard and his employees brainstormed a new Mr. Beast inspired idea where over the course of several months, their team would buy every single available game on the eShops for these consoles before the closure. While there were a few games they were not able to obtain due to those games pulling out early, they certainly downloaded the majority of them, costing them a total of $22,971. That is absurd. Okay, that mean, I mean, twenty-three thousand dollars for 3DS and Wii U stuff. Like, how would you like, even even with Jim's idea? How are you going to make that back? That's a lot of views well, as I mean, a YouTuber. If you think about it, though, it's also a tax write-off, and you're donating it, so it's a donation expense. So you're yeah, like double so, dipping across the board. So quite frankly, I think he might have figured out the total costs and then looked at the tax write-off as well as like the donation write off and he'd only have to pay like what 5000 or make up 5000 and then factor in the ad revenue from all the videos and and then all the good pr too 
like you saved you archived it because back then that was a huge thing about digital preservation that was huge in like the gaming discussion space so he also gets the good guy points for saving nintendo like yeah, saving because, legacy well that's the thing is because nintendo is like because during even covid nintendo was going after companies for having archival sites or even just like rom sites in general yeah. because of piracy however i I, given his ties to Nintendo, I mean, they probably put the kibosh on the plan either way. Like that would be something that they would cut ties with him over. But the the other aspect of this is like that's a sudden dip. But again, he could have like crowdfunded some of the money for it, which he did. He, he crowdfunded yeah, because, basically like, all of it. But like for a dying channel, it just seems like a stupid idea. I don't know. It just well, yeah. I mean, I mean, most most of his ideas are fucking stupid. <laughs> well, it could have also been the shot in the arm his channel needed too. It was like a hail mary, you know. Or... I don't know. I just don't see much in like. There's good guy points to it, but then like even the charity side of it, like I don't know. That would get into some sketchy shit because he doesn't technically own any of that. Well, I mean, the whole thing is that he would have to set up a foundation of sorts for this archival to even, like, go through. Yeah. Way, no one is actually making money, and if Nintendo was going to come at him with a lawsuit, like, he would be protected because it would be considered a charity, not, like, one that's making, like, not, not like, a business. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I think it's way, it's, like, looking at a risk analysis, it's stupid. All the way around, in my opinion. Yeah, but he's also I mean, a narcissist that wants the attention of feeling good about saving these these things, you know? Yeah, and he's a pathological liar, and then he Machiavelli schemed. Yeah. <laughs> Gigi really Dark wants triad. us to come back to Duck Triad. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, the, the building blocks are there. It's up to you to assemble them. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't know if he's got enough for, like... I don't know. The Machiavellianism is this one I don't like. This that seems too ahead of him. Yeah, I think he's too special ed for that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I don't like, mind getting canceled. I I, I he's think too special fed given the looks of him. I th I think ben yeah. <laughs> it's unknown how much this exactly cost in man hours or other expenses related to the multi month long production of this video. Within the video, there were also themes of preservation and that the consoles will be donated to the Video Game History Foundation. While it is committed to them, they were not taking it in, likely as in its current state, due to copyright law, there will be little utility. There was also some controversy about how the Video Game History Foundation operates in relation to Gerard, but the bigger issue at hand was the cost of the video itself. Gerard, over the course of several months, was able to finance this through sponsorships. Today's video is brought to you by our sponsor. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by today's sponsor. Thank you and shout out to our sponsor. But these sponsors were likely regular sponsors, not doing it directly to finance the eShop video. So 22,000 was spent on a video that currently sits at 1.4 million views. This means that it performed marginally better than its Persona video. This was a massive loss that was likely not profitable. At this point, virtually everything was working against Gerard. Sponsors did not come easy. Nintendo was not even giving him review copies. His views kept on dipping and though he continued to experiment, these videos were performing so poorly that they were hurting his channel. Gerard was not doing well. You know, it's gonna sound weird, like, I have five therapists. <laughs> five therapists, right? I genuinely have five therapists. Each I, one, I have one. I, well, each one's for something different, right? I suffer from codependency in my never-ending ability to, uh, to please people, to mm -hmm. try and please my father and, and the legacy that he's built for us kids. I have a couples therapy for me and my partner. I have my own personal therapist. I don't know. Have you tried pulling the boogie me method and sucking them off? <laughs> Wait till you hear all these. <laughs> I have a couples therapy for me and my partner. I have my own personal therapist. I have a business therapist to help with consultant and that consulting. Exists? We could, yeah. Wait, what? And, and the last a therapist. business therapist? <laughs> Does that even exist? <laughs> Ironically, I know this exists, and yes. Whoa, wait, wait, okay. It, regale us. Like, tell us what the fuck a business therapist entails. So, it is, um, okay, the way I know about this is a company that I worked for. I was actually looking at, like, buying a couple of the franchises, but, uh, this is not, like, a franchise thing that you guys would know about. You would probably maybe know about a GG, but, uh, hot seat pressure washers. They do hot water pressure washers, right? Well, I worked for the original people that, like, actually developed that whole thing. Anyway, long story short, uh, the son was taking over the business, and as the CEO, like, 
he actually had like his, his board chairman, his council and all that, but he actually brought in a business therapist to like help him make out, uh, plot out, uh, business like decisions and stuff like that. And it was almost like, uh, it was separate from a, uh, a, what is the word I want to use separate from like a business advisor. This is somebody that like actually like was able to coach him on a business level to think and actually so had some a therapy counselor. background. Yeah, probably that would be a great way to explain it. Jesus. Yeah. It just sounds ridiculous. It's like you lay on the couch and tell me where the pressure washer touched you. Like, <laughs> like, like, the therapist, like, what the what fuck? The couch? Well, I mean, uh, it's mostly on the given hands. That story, given <laughs> that story of how he blew out his knee, that would fit the detail what you're yeah. going for, Jim. Yeah, like, 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 what? Is it like you had some traumatic business injury? Like, <laughs> Well, it's to deal with the the pressures and stresses of like making large financial decisions and stuff, and like you're affecting like livelihoods and things like that. So yeah, there, there, there. I know it exists. Do I support and believe in it? No. No, because it sounds I, like it's something that a consultant. It's, it can sounds do. like it's a glorified <laughs> hand holder for when you make a big purchase. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It really sounds like one of those like work coaches for like. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be yeah. fine like just let the money go through you did nothing wrong they're there <laughs> right? right it's not like you scammed the irs <laughs> surprise <laughs> what the fuck yeah you know hindsight i wonder if the business therapist was actually used in the expenses on the 990s i mean i would Honestly, now, like, demand Probably. a refund. Because clearly, <laughs> clearly, they didn't do their job right now. Like... No, it'd be a charity therapist. <laughs> but, yeah, and then he talks about this last therapist here. Therapist was It's just kind of like a, an overall therapist that interacts with all the other ones to really track my progress and, and go through it. Gerard's insecurities. So, like, the fifth therapist is... <laughs> You have a business therapist, and you have a therapist that's a manager. <laughs> so you have like a middle management therapist. <laughs> you have like a man. You have, you have like a CEO therapist. Like, like seriously, one of those therapists could handle like all three of uh, the previous jobs, and uh, the business one I think is cockamamie bullshit. <laughs> and then this overall one is completely unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But please tell me how he is a smart man. He was going to make a, <laughs> some good decisions with the Wii stuff. <laughs> yeah, somewhere there's like some guy that just, the, the business therapist is like wringing his hand. So I just fleeced this bitch. Like, I, I just fleeced this bitch for all this money. I mean, seriously, oh, it sounds, I don't know, it sounds like one of those bullshit things, like a PR team, you know, like a crisis PR management team. Yeah. Like what Daddy O Five had, where they dress him up in like fucking IZOD t shirts and everything, oh, and make him look presentable. It's well, like, like even uh, that we kind of just stuff. Complete white trash. We're we're actually a family. <laughs> we do care about our kids. We don't torture them. Like that. That's niche, but it it does have an existing like viable market. Like the business therapist thing. Like I I never totally understood it because like as you guys know. have it, pointed out. There are so many positions that, like, just through, like, a, a, like, work, uh, oh, like, a work, uh, what's the fucking word? An advisory word? position. Like, an advisory like, position, yeah. yeah. It, Couldn't handle it. Like, seriously, hey, this whole fucking business therapist thing it just sounds like that fucking gimmick from The Simpsons where Millhouse becomes, like, insanely popular and yeah. the one lawyer dude who's used for all the early bits in the early years of The Simpsons comes up and is like, Hi, Millhouse, I'm your I'm your manager and your official drug dealer keeper aware. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds his like one, he got please, totally his fleeced. Yeah. Father, his biggest weaknesses were gripping him harder now that his company and career he had built up over the past 10 years were all failing. As much as he reflects on the fall of G4 and the backlash it got, this was truly nothing in terms of scale for this upcoming scandal that he would be the center of. Everything over the past 10 years would be dredged up, and a reimagining of his character that was so conflicting, no one wanted to believe it was true. This is how a charity exposed the fraud. 
Now this is the part that I actually researched that I can actually give information on. I just know because of my track record of things like G4 exploding, me being friends with John Tron when he was a racist, uh, you know, I've been a part of like you know, pro Jared, like <laughs> pulling one thread out of everything is going to be like my entire life. Play scamming charity with being friends with a guy who said some questionable things and then some random woman going schizo and sinking the network that he had nothing to do with like they're all the no. same honestly like that was the funniest time though for john tron because he after he made those comments he directly went on to fucking sargon's live stream <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> and sargon was like he was like amazed by his surname. He thought it was like a fucking joke. Like they called him Jafar because he said, <laughs> "In a way that scares the living crap out of me." It is November of 2023. Carl Jobs, a content creator who typically covers video game speedrunners and their falsified runs, received an anonymous tip. This person alleges that the Open Hand Foundation, the charity run by the Khalil family that Gerard raises money for every year, has not donated a single cent. This is a very bold accusation, especially since Gerard has stated in the past exactly how the money is being used. We are raising money for dementia research and treatment, more specifically helping families and those loved ones who have been affected by uh, early onset dementia and who are learning how their lives are going to be changing forever. We are raising money for dementia research. We're trying to help those who are affected by Alzheimer's, all types, of, all types of dementia and beyond, specifically people who, families who have just found out that a loved one has dementia. Essentially, uh, we're raising money for dementia research and prevention, uh, specifically for people, um, for families rather, who just found out that a loved one of theirs has been um, affected by dementia. Gerard stated three different areas the money was going towards. It was going he to research, preservation. sounds like preservation he, uh, 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 has dementia. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of interesting wordplay here that like I even picked up on, and it was kind of nice to see that. So uh, June's going to actually pick out on a lot of the word wording that I picked up on. Um, he does actually show ProPublica, which is what I was going to use. I think I actually talked about it in a prior video on something, but I actually brought up uh, the completionist in relation to it. We were talking about some other financial shit. Um, and was actually showing ProPublica and how that works and everything else. Um, he shows that and then, um, what else? He points out the shit that I noticed with the golf charity, which that was bad. Uh, and then there was another thing. We'll get to it. I'll remember. To those affected. Gerard also took the bold leap of stating exactly where the money was going. Oh, the actual filings and filling out of the actual paperwork. This is something that my wife and I reviewed. And, like, there's some really sketchy shit. Like, uh, I'll address it because he doesn't go in as much detail as I could with some of that shit. Uh, currently working with the University of San Francisco, and we're kind of one of their main um, their main funding uh, support partners uh, going into all of this. Um, main funding partner support partner. This is a very strong statement. Luckily, charities like Gerard's need to file what is called a 990 PM. These files are made publicly available and can be found on the IRS website. Better yet, they can also be found through ProPublica, which gets the documents on there faster. It is here that you can find the most recent 990 PF from 2022. ProPublica also has a very user-friendly interface that charts revenue, expenses, and total assets. Immediately, it is apparent that the revenue is matching the total assets, and the total assets keep rising, which means none of the money has been donated. But then again, third-party website-generated charts are not always the most reliable. Checking the actual 990 PFs show that for 2022, the gross revenue was $170,000. The net was $106,000. This was added to the pile, which at the end of the year was, quote, cash non-interest bearing $655,000. So there's a big problem there already. It should be an interest bearing account at the very least. $1,520, unquote. Looking further down, the foundation truly did not donate a single cent. It was just sitting there. To make matters worse, it was not even being invested. This means on top of the money not being donated, it was actually losing value over the years as it was sitting in a bank account not moving. A lot of that comes down to inflation. So basically, as inflation progresses, your value of your dollar is losing value. So your dollar buying power in 2015 $100,000 will go farther than $100,000 will now just because of, you know, uh, the, the gross domestic product growth and stuff like that. In disbelief, Carl Jobs emailed the Open Hand Foundation. What he got back was an email from John Khalil, a board member and... These are interesting because these I don't recall seeing. 
I remember seeing one of these messages, the other one I don't remember seeing. Brother of Gerard. Here he stated that, quote, We have been evaluating potential beneficiaries who align with our vision. Entities that could use our funds efficiently and effectively without a substantial portion being diverted to administrative expenses. Unquote. So it is again confirmed that the Open Hand Foundation, since it's... There was a key thing in there. <clears throat> uh, we have been evaluating potential to align with our vision, entities that could use our funds efficiently and effectively without a substantial portion being diverted to administrative expenses. He's going to talk about it here, but you can actually make, when you make a charitable donation, you can make like an exempted donation, basically dictating what your money is exactly used for. And there's nothing yeah. in everything that he set up that would not allow Gerard from making that kind of a donation. Yeah, because um, if I remember correctly, this is how a lot of charities uh, did it, even Planned Parenthood. And um, I can't remember if this was Howard Stern who did this bit, but they got a guy who sounded like um, David Letterman from the, uh, from the Late Show. Yep. And he basically he was trying to make a donation to Planned Parenthood, so it go so it went directly to uh, black families, and he was like being extremely fucking racist and everything. <laughs> and the receptionist on the other end, it's like, oh, we completely understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can. You, I mean, like. You can specifically outline it to like even be like, this is only to be money used for technology. This is only money to be used for specifically. In his case, he could have said research, um, mm -hmm. excluding research doctors' salaries and like things like that. Like it, it, he could, you can outline it however specific you want. And the charity that's receiving that must abide by that because that's part of their like specifications with the 501c3 shit well, yeah because yeah. i was um, gonna say wasn't his argument is he was saving it up to do a restricted donation and it yes. came out that like you don't need a certain dollar amount no you, you do not it at any level you could donate yeah. uh, you could donate it two dollars and restrict your donation mm -hmm. i mean honestly what's what's kind of ironic here is um <laughs> What they say uh, is like entities that could use our funds efficiently and effectively without it substantial without a substantial portion being diverted, diverted to, to administrative expenses, and that's what they fucking did themselves with the charity money that they raised. Technically, no, they did actually put it in a savings account, but it's not even like a true savings account because again, it should have been in an interest bearing account, so that way at least like the money would increase in value with GDP because most most savings accounts will at least accrue interest based on like GDP. Um, mm -hmm. or uh, but, but they did borrow from it, right? I remember they did that not. Thing. They did not, and they that's did. something that he uh, he does point out well. There is a bit of wording in here that I think June missed that I'll also point out. That's another thing. And it's kind of where I saw the trickiness and going after them for this stuff um, when it comes to the golf charity stuff. That's specifically where it happens. And then... Because okay. um, I remember like there was something that was being brought up at that time where funds were being transferred like to the savings and out of like he was reimbursing or um, something like that no uh, so what you can do is and this is where it got tricky and it's kind of with the the next layer of this is that he basically said that all of these donations for like bits and memberships and everything else were going to cover or were going directly to this fund but then out of that he was also taking the money for um like covering like the cost of running indie land and all that, which he's allowed to do that, but it's the wording. A lot of it comes down to his wording is what puts him in a very gray area. Well, yeah, like, okay. Instead of going through say. research. Well, he's saying all right, that cause... all proceeds or all donations are going to X Y Z, you know, funds, right? Instead of mm -hmm. all proceeds are going to XYZ funds. There's a big difference because all donations means that you're not taking your expenses out of those donations to pay for the charity drive. Okay. That's that's yeah, the tricky language that got him in trouble too. I know what Gigi's talking about because there's a part in the Mudahar and Carl interview where he said that he did reimburse himself. Yeah, and that, that comes down to the business. Wondering. 
that some of that's okay. the business, some of that's the golf charity. And I picked up on both okay, of those when you. I was looking at this shit because um, at the very least, I feel there is a prosecutable person here and it's not necessarily Gerard. Um, it would be whoever's the, it's whoever's filling out these documents. They're, it's either a financial advisor or a chief financial officer if they've got a board of directors. Uh, that person that should be That would be, be his into. mother-in-law because their mother-in-law, I think, is the treasurer. Yeah. Like that person okay, so so that mom, it can actually get so, in trouble here because there's there's so, big discrepancies on the paperwork. Okay, so there's a clear like I mean a prosecute a prosecutable clerical error is what you're saying, right? Yes. Okay. There's one saving grace in wording, but yeah, it, it's really like it would be bad for them if the IRS comes at them, like in any way, shape, or form, based on the stuff that I will show. <laughs> they submitted because it's not sufficient enough referred to administrative expenses unquote so it is again confirmed that the open hand foundation since its establishment in 2014 has not made a donation chuck also details that they donated body parts alluding to donating their mother's body to help with research and likely through the pbd west golf tournament they donated money before they were an official charity though insufficient progress was being made so they were deciding to vet charities hence the lack of donation <coughs> closing the response was two ill-conceived notions firstly was that jock was stating that there are no irregularities or misuse of funds because the department of justice would intervene and that their financial activities are quote-unquote transparent this is true to an extent while the expenses are listed on the 990 pfs they are not itemized and or described very poorly and inconsistently this is where this is one place where they can get in trouble because you're going to see the actual breakdowns that they submitted with these forms and like you can actually go check this stuff out on your own. These are not like breakdowns like they should be and there's actual lines like when you're reading through these 990s there's lines with some of this shit should have been filled out on these forms was not filled out but was lumped in general total cells which is not it's not right. It leads to a lot of big discrepancies and a lot of uh lack of transparency well, like yeah like i was gonna say like a lot of questionable spending and yes yes of funds. there's also inconsistent spending over the years and there's nothing to line it up like he's gonna show right now for example on the 2022 filings the major two expenses are golf fundraiser expenses and fundraising what does fundraising allude to is that india so you have business expenses here dues and subscriptions and those two nearly cancel each other out um, and then you have the fundraising and all the rest and then insurance. Watch how these columns shrink. And that shows a lack of transparency throughout the years. Land or is that a separate event? What about the 2021 filings? Well, these are even less clear as even though more was spent in expenses this year, there are only two categories. There's no, no subscriptions, no insurance, no, nothing that you just saw two seconds ago. And this is one year's yeah. worth of difference. Dues and subscriptions and the blanket expenses. And in 2020, the expenses are only described. And then you have this where there's only expenses. Where What's the dues and subscriptions? Why is that suddenly incurred here? And then why is this inconsistent with... I wish there was like an expedited way to go back. Why is this further... Very poorly and inconsistently. <laughs> For example, on the 2022 filings, the major two expenses inconsistent with this like just the sheer amount of line data doesn't mean anything and then there's nothing substantiating there's no receipts or anything is is my fear i should say uh, it's speculation that there's no financial data backing this and whatever they're using uh software id well i'm wondering isn't this just like the top sheet form yeah, like but, where you give a summarized amount and then like all the receipts would be in a but even still like a, it's a different... inconsistent okay it, there's a big inconsistency here like there's inconsistencies and dis and discrepancies between like you see the golf fundraiser expenses are being taken out of this they're not mentioned the previous two years even though the golf fundraiser was going on prior to the inception of this the golf okay. fundraiser is like a real big like sticking point with me like there's something very suspicious there i would i would put bigger suspicion on that over the open hand foundation itself but i i wanted to point that out i mean again there's the fundraising the cost of fundraising that misses that gets evaporated slowly even though they've been having this go on longer than the three years he's showing here like so yeah. there's just a lot of inconsistencies in the data do you think 
do you think it's possible that they were using Gerard's Indy Land to fund the golf tournament? No, I don't think that. But I to go back to Gigi's point, even if you want to say that there is like these are being captured in different tables of data, like the the dollar amount should be relatively the same year over year. The cost of Indie Land is roughly the same. I mean, you might see an increase based on scale or size, but it's going to be roughly the same. Your insurance is roughly the same. The golf tournament that's been going on for a decade at this point is roughly the same. I mean, all these totals should be relatively close and they jump drastically. Well, there's that one year that there was like uh, 20,000 in expenses and then yes. the next year it was like 2,000. Yes. It's like, it's really weird how that jumped. Yeah, it's not like it's like 18,000, 20,000, 24,000, which is like you could track that. Like, you could say, okay, well, they went up in scale plus their normal expenses. Like, you could probably break that out. Like, it's such a large jump. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's jumps up and down. That's the thing is it's not it's not progressing in a linear manner, if that makes like sense. Like ping-ponging. Yeah. This is our okay, fundraiser expenses I was gonna and say, fundraising. If it was increasing uh, for one year, it could be like a change of venue for where the charity was held, right? It could be, yes. Like, yes. But overall, because, to have a, I mean, jump I don't from, think... a jump from, like, say, uh, 5,000 to 14,000 to uh, 2,000 to 20,000 is really erratic. Well, what if, what if, like, I mean, this is a weird example, but, like, there could be, like, you know, your regular golf course that has, this, like, golf club where it's, like, low rent, where it'd be, like, a 2,000. Then it jumps up to twenty thousand because the change of venue is at a country club that has a golf course. They've never changed the venue. Okay, it's and that same... have to be itemized, even so. And that would ha- yeah. it would have to be itemized, but also that brings in the other big thing that I have an issue with, with on this is that the golf charity seems to make its way in and out of open hand very freely. Mm. Like you'll see what I mean, and it's and it comes down to a particular group of wording that their whoever wrote some of the legal may have saved their ass on what does fundraising allude to is that indie land or is that a separate event what about the 2021 filings well these are even less clear as even though more was spent in expenses this year there are only two categories dues and subscriptions and the blanket expenses and in 2020 the expenses are only described as expenses to the original point this is not highly transparent nor does being a 501c3 make one immune to deception or mismanagement the second notion that closed the email was jock asking carl if he knew of any good charities the foundation could donate to this is a rather strange question especially considering that the foundation documents demonstrate that every member of the board was responsible for seeking a charity to donate to and to ask carl jobs is to insinuate that though they should have conducted hours upon hours of research they could have somehow missed a charity for their very specific cause this response only brought on more questions Primarily, Carl asked about Gerard's statements that they were partnered with the UCSF, when in fact the Open Hand Foundation had still not donated anything, and on the Open Hand's website, they were listed as a benefactor. The following email that Carl received was one of a far different tone. No, dear Carl, and no one. This one is the one that I hadn't seen before this stuff. Warm regards. The email opens with, quote, UCSF is acknowledged on our website as part of our historical contributions, unquote. This is misleading. Unmarked donations from the Khalil family are not the same as the official Open Hand Foundation charity, which has still not donated anything. Furthermore, Jock, representing the Open Hand Foundation, doubles down aggressively by stating, quote, The insinuation of wrongdoing on the part of the Open Hand Foundation is both unwarranted and unfounded. We conduct our operations within the bounds of legal and ethical standards, and any implication to the contrary is baseless, unquote. Understanding how misleading the Open Hand Foundation is, Jock closes the email cutting communication. Quote, we consider the information provided in our statement as comprehensive and do not intend to issue further public comments on these matters. Unquote. With it clear that the Open Hand Foundation was attempting to hide, Carl Jobs wanted to break the story, but he wanted to make sure it had a fair number of eyes on it. This is where some ordinary gamers, or Mudahar, comes in. Carl calls him up late at night, providing everything he's found out. Mudahar, unsure about the story, by the way, you like the misspelling on Mudahar? Story, considering Gerard's superb uh, education, yeah, I was wondering. To call Gerard through- <laughs> like Maraha. Discord and asking about like, it. So Mara, the timeline for it is Mara. like. <laughs> it's like it's M- like Muta. a Japanese pronunciation. Mara <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> like two p.m. I'm like, hey, Gerard, the completionist, are you ready for a call? He's like, yeah, give me a few hours. So we give him a few hours. In my head, I'm like, he's probably talking to a lawyer. He's not gonna take this call. It's a lost cause. But surprise, 
a la Intervented, he was like, he's going to take the fucking call. Did anyone tell so you? You were, you were notified that the money was sitting there the whole time? I knew it was sitting there uh -huh. at a certain point, and that's what me made me proactively go about it. Like, Do you know when that point was? This is bad because this is him admitting to fraud. Oh, oh yeah, I remember like the subreddit was up in arms with this. This is bad because this is him admitting to fraud, like point blank, like undeniable. Because he admits to knowing it, and he says 2021, he further corrects himself to 2022. So he knew about this for at least a year and still went on perpetuating that it all was being of it. donated. Yeah. So that is fraudulent, like straight up. Well, I was made aware in 2021, the, the, the money hadn't moved yet. Okay. And that's what made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's when I got personally involved to move it. And did anyone? 2021, last year, 2022. There are two takeaways from the start of the call. Gerard found out that the money had not been moved in 2022. This is despite him being on the board and him running an event for the foundation. This is already negligent on his part. So the goal on the back end for my family that I've been told is like, we're just gonna raise a bunch of money and then give it to one org and like make a bigger impact rather than just giving smaller donations that don't move the needle. Uh, I mean, as of this week, we've been we've been having conversations about moving it as early as, as today or tomorrow just because the pressure I got from you guys, if I'm being quite honest. To break this down, what Gerard is alluding to is that his family wanted to make a restricted donation. Restricted donations are donations that go to fund something very specific within an organization. They are restricted to being used in whatever way the donor specifies. There are multiple issues with this statement, as the Open Hand Foundation has not, nor Gerard, ever mentioned a restricted donation. Many don And he doesn't have to. He does not have to here. Donations can be restricted in small amounts. There is no need to stockpile money. And only now is the Open Hand Foundation going forward with a donation because of the pressure call drops and Mudahar were applying. If this was the goal all along, then why would the discovery of it influence it? As much as this call revealed how unaligned the Foundation was, it also revealed more of the dynamic Gerard had with his family. The last thing I want to do is ruin the legacy of my family, of my mom and her memory, especially because this is such a personal thing for the last 25 years of my life. Um, you know, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to be like, do you guys want money to help me hide this? It's not what this is at all. As far as off the record stuff is, I'm going to obviously keep, you know, any mention of you and, you know, your disagreements with your dad really out of it, because I know that's a very private personal matter. There is a deep conflict between Gerard and his family. There has always been this conflict. But being that whatever was being discussed is off the record and not in the publicly available recording of the call, it is not clear what this conflict was beyond wanting to donate the money sooner. Although throughout the years, Gerard has shown to be both fearful and approval seeking of his father. I am trying to complete something in my life. I am trying to fill a hole that sits. I'm going to go off on a theory here. I believe the father is manipulating the funds for his own personal gains. And I think this really fucks shit up for him. Well, that was one of the theories on the subreddit that especially um, with the golf tournament, that it was being funneled there because it was like uh, Charles Khalil and friends, that it was like this, like just uh, a big sort of play yeah i'll wait till we get to the wording i'll point out what like because june unfortunately brushes over it i don't think he realized the impact of it it's pretty large a lot of that whole is is my family and and yeah. specifically the word legacy so i have a one-man show called the completionist legacy and the show is about my relationship with my father and wow. how i am his living legacy and that whether i like it or not i am chasing this dragon that is to make him Pr proud of me and it gives you an idea my dad would see me perform i'd be like the lead of a play i'd be the villain greasy beard combat scene and we're fighting and i die and you just hear my dad go ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then he learned this <laughs> oh, oh he's so bad <laughs> he's so bad all of my teachers like this is why he needs to be an engineer <laughs> I want to build something that's going to be a legacy. I want to build something that will always remind people of the completionist, but won't necessarily be that. When family says you jump, you jump. That's just something I've had to deal with, as you can tell with my insane lifestyle at this point. What will become more and more apparent is Gerard finds that there is a mishandling of the Open Hand Foundation, but he always weighs his family above his morals. He always weighs his image above his morals. This insecurity of seeking approval from both his audience and family is his undoing. That and sections of the call would be construed as manipulation. I'm just asking from a humanity perspective of like, if I am the target of this, I have 20 mouths to feed, I have sponsors, I have a business, I'm trying to make video games, I'm trying to get out of content creation so I don't have to worry about YouTube anymore and, and do better things in the world. And I just know because of my track record of things like G4 exploding, me being friends with John Tron when he was a racist, uh, you know, I've been a part of like, you know, pro Jared and I don't want to go home tonight and tell everyone, hey, there is a gigantic 
thing coming to claim my career and you all have to close down and find somewhere else to do. I know this is shooting me to say this. I'm not trying to ask for sympathy or anything, but this kind of stuff, I mean, I've been following your guys' stuff for years. The stuff with Billy Mitchell, Carl, the stuff that you've done Mudo with tons of content creators over the years. Like, mm-hmm. there's no nuance to this. People are going to see this and they're going to immediately go, that Gerard guy who's been nice to a bunch of people actually isn't very nice overall. Fuck him. Even if I survive this somehow, even if this is like, people are like, well, whatever, that's how it is. Yeah. It's, it's going to take the passion out of what I do. I like no. I'm, I'm, people aren't going to trust me ever again. I'm not going to trust myself ever again. And okay, I'm just going to walk question. away from all this. Yeah. Where's his business therapist? <laughs> like this is a fucking call. If that fucking position even exists, this would be the call where he'd be on the other end of the line, trying to calm him the fuck down. Did you catch the boogie admission right here? Yeah. It's basically the hyperventilating. I don't want this to come out. It'll no, no, shit. no. Yeah. It's it's even more nuanced than that. Listen here. People aren't going to trust me ever again. I'm not going to trust myself ever again. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to accidentally lie. Yeah. <laughs> My God. I swear, hey, you were shitting on the idea that he's just tan boogie, Jim. <laughs> I'm never going to trust myself again but i don't want to accidentally lie like it is one for one the same statement just opposite ends of the fucking vernacular <laughs> i take the l here <laughs> <laughs> so, so gerard the completionist is gerard the dark triad gerard 2988 yeah <laughs> <laughs> well and i mean I'm just gonna he walk just away from his career <laughs> All this like I, I just this is like me being like great so i'm out not just a, of, of content creation or or being an online personality i'm just uh-huh. gonna i'm just gonna stop i'm just gonna disappear and start over and and never talk to anyone ever again gerard disconnected halfway through the call this is what mudhar says before he's back i okay i'll just say right now there, there was definitely some there, there was a lot of guilt tripping throughout that entire video yes or throughout that entire call uh we absolutely have to cover this machiavellian just the steaming an actual right. piece of fraud like this is legitimate Dark fraud. Triad confirmed i don't know though <laughs> i still i still think it's i don't think it's scheming i think it fear i think it's well, uh i don't think it's a scheme as much as like i would target boogie with scheming to make well, money i, I mean, think this guy did is like fearful here because of like the repercussions on a family side of it well Just, that's the thing think- because because before this call was released, Gerard made a video where he was acting all the tough guy, kind of like how Boogie was doing with a lot of the shit revolving around his cancer. I think that and came he... from the father. I don't think that, that's him. I think the father's the dark triad. It could be. <laughs> I think he could be a mouthpiece for it, honestly. Like, I just, I don't see... You're talking about a guy that has five therapists and he suddenly has enough will to stand up to two million plus sub subscribers that are outing him for being a fraud. Like well, I think I mean, he got pressure thing. through his father and was like, well, no, we'll sue him. Just threaten to sue him. Yeah. I mean, I could see that, but at the same time to go along with it and to put up that kind of act, you kind of have to be like a bit of a narcissist, a pathological liar, and to be a bit of a schemer too, on top of that, because using those kinds of things that Muda is pointing out, like the guilt tripping, the, what is it the pleading and everything like that's those are usually like the tools that Machiavelli would use if he's trying to suck up to somebody because the whole idea of a Machiavellian schemer is to use any and all methods at your disposal to get in good with a powerful figure he sees Carl and Muda in a position of power in all of this so of course he's going to play the beggar yeah do you you think that they're he's trying to get in as like the sort of like weak victim like you don't yes. want you don't want to do this to me because my dad it, it, you know my dad's really mean to me and like i i didn't mean to do any of this like so don't don't yeah sue, because, you know don't report me please like yeah because he's trying to get to an end goal which is like to be in good with these guys like to win them over to his side and then bam after this call happens he releases a video threatening to sue which yeah. I mean, to your no, point, like he, the father he released, could have pressured him. He released the video before this. This call is out of order in all of this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, so I know. I'm just a, saying, like this there's... call happened before it was posted, and then he makes that video. Then they post the call. Yeah, is what I'm trying to say. Because the lawsuit, his threat of a lawsuit, is what made Muda and Carl like collectively decide to drop this. 
Yeah, because I, I'm just going off of like the emotional argument to like basically make him out to be a Machiavellian schemer. I'm not going like in the chronology of which happened, like as far as YouTube is concerned. I'm trying to think. Because, I mean, those are tactics that Machiavelli had, like, prescribed. But we could always ask Boogie. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like, it follows the same track. Like, they use the same method that Machiavelli would prescribe. If you are in a position of weakness, you would want to p- present that as, have pity on me. And I could buy that, but it's still the other sides of the pathological and the narcissism that you're going to have to sell me on here. I mean, his entire career is just trying to. Uh, you the get narcissism attention. would well. The narcissism would be like, oh, I want, I don't, I want to leave a legacy behind. I don't want to tarnish my mom's legacy. You know, it's like no one really pushed him to do this. I he would, did it I himself. would disagree because I just know culturally, like I know that a lot of people, uh, of like Middle Eastern descent. I mean, Indian, like. Uh, middle east in particular like actually do have that forced like narrative well isn't he persian of persian descent i mean that still would be middle eastern yeah i know i, I just, just like I, I, you, culturally you speci- like you specified indian well i was just trying to include i wasn't trying to like i wasn't trying to just say india uh, and I, or okay. just say because i don't know what he is but i know it's like a force like that's where it's almost the same uh Mm, what's the fucking word I want to use? It's basically the old culturally. It's the same as like, you see a lot of stuff with Asian cultures do the same thing where it's uh, forcing them to go on to be a doctor or uh, engineer or whatever. Like they're, they're enforcing the fact of like, no, you're going to take care of us. Like, that's a big thing that I know just from like having friends in the culture like that. Like it, it's more prevalent here than it would be with Boogie. Like mm. uh, culturally, I think there is a difference here. Now, let me let me ask this: Do you think that he is narcissistic on the level of like I want all this fame and attention and stuff, so that way my dad will see me as valuable? Yeah, I'd say that. I mean, that would be that would also play to the scheming part of it a bit. But then again, it's like it has to be a voluntary act in order to save oneself versus like a psychological deficit yeah i just i I have a harder time like uh playing into the i don't want to like give in the confirmation bias here like yeah i i will honestly say there's a lot of things here that yeah you could say are like the dark triad are very similar to boogie and all that but like i feel like there is a cultural aspect here that has to be considered that doesn't exist on boogie's side (laughs) Well, I mean, we're kind of like doing this as a meme for both Boogie and Gerard here. He'd fit the meme variant of a dark triad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a literal sense, like a Machiavellian schemer has to be completely cognizant of what they're doing. And it can't be acted on like through psychological deficits. It has to be a situational deficit in which they would act in the ways of trying to manipulate someone. Like a positional deficit, like say... uh, the king died, uh, you know, like, you know, the saying is like, yeah. the king is dead, long live the king. It's like whoever was like close to the old king that died is going to have to do some Machiavellian scheming to get in good with the new one. Yeah. But like, that's, that's basically what Machiavellianism is. Yeah. I mean, but it's, when we're it's doing serving the meme a version self-interest here, above all. Yeah. I, yeah. Because a self-interest here it could be both pleasing his father and not getting exposed at the same time it's just that for the meme version it has to be for like any kind of like positional regardless of like the or origin point any kind of positional power he needs to maintain i'll 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 when we get to the point i'll show you where my furthering of the study like my thought process comes from like because there's there's two very key things and I think that it's where the father really comes into play. When Gerard reconnects, after leaving his woes on Carl and Mudahar, he plays his hand and asks, I take it that you guys are dead set on, on making pieces about this? I mean, I, I yeah, I, uh, I'm definitely covering. All right, well, um, I guess that's it. I guess that's... um. I like that part right there. This was- 
<laughs> I bet I, I'm just gonna go be hitting the old dusty trail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna like, leave now. Thanks for talking, guys. I'm, a, yeah, I'm gonna like take that's... my ball so and pathetic. go on home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, so pathetic. Yeah, it's kind of like when Peter found out he had like a black ancestor, and he tries to fit in with the black community. He's like, "Well, that's my mama." And then he's just like, well, I'm going to be hitting the old dusty trail. And then yeah. he hits like the fire exit. <laughs> this was all happening behind the scenes. On November 12th, Gerard, aware of the coming storm, streamed, keenly aware of what was coming. If you guys ever wonder what I look like after I get destroyed by the internet for anything, I just do this as best I can. No, I just mean like if something bad happens and I'm like feeling sad. The following day, Mudahar and Carl Jobs released their videos. Their website clearly states they support the UCSF, and they have a quote from David Kessler, the dean of the UCSF School of Medicine, thanking them for their gift. But the interesting thing about David Kessler is that he was fired as the dean of the UCSF School of Medicine in 2007, seven years before Open Hand was even officially registered. If they have been looking for a beneficiary since 2014, why has Gerard been claiming they support organizations across the world, including the UCSF and the Alzheimer's Association? We are raising money for dementia research in honor of my late mom, trying to help folks who have been impacted by dementia, working with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTT Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America, and so many more. Why is he claiming the money is actually given to people who know how to use it? Now that they brought it up, if the filings do show an accurate account of what happened, I do think this is illegal and would be considered charity fraud. Generally, taking money by dishonest means is considered fraud. You just can't tell people to give you money under a false pretense. And you can't wait 10 years until you're caught before doing something with it either. In this case, Open Hand lied for many years saying that it was funding organizations, it wasn't. Even if all of the money is still there, the actions of Open Hand were unethical and almost certainly illegal. And as unfortunate as this situation is, it does need to be called out and there do need to be repercussions. Carl Jopp's video also goes over some of the call, the emails he received from Jock and incorrectly states that the 990 PFs were not signed, which he later corrected. Though what the rest of the video presented was accurate, the reaction to it was initially somewhat negative. Friends of the completionist awaited his response, but a few were egregiously misreporting what was in the video. Pro Jared lying by stating that, quote, this is horseshit. They're both making a lot of assumptions and accusations without being able to actually prove anything, almost like they're presenting the worst and trying to get views off of it. They didn't bother trying to reach out to Gerard about it. No due diligence. Unquote. The irony was that it was apparent that both Carl and Mudahar called Gerard, and Jared would have known this if he took 10 minutes to watch the video. Mudahar addressed this and other unfounded criticism in his follow-up video seven days later. Eventually, many creators were reacting to the ongoing events, coming to the same conclusions that there was something wrong going on. As the internet continued to wait for a response from Gerard, the most they received from Gerard was well, him stating I mean, that he was holding on as- June, using both Charlie and fucking Asmund Gold, I mean- <laughs> they, they go wherever the wind blow, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reacting well, to the guys, video coverage uh, of the story. Uh, Mudahar released the video, and it was bad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. ...as it was coming out, stating that there will be a statement soon, but this could not come soon enough. Patience had worn thin. The most anyone was receiving from Gerard by late November was his continued statements on how he was doing. And then on the 30th, Carl okay, Jobs released yeah, his video. We got the timeline wrong on this because this kind of actually plays into the Machiavellian scheming because he didn't make the threatening suit before they released their videos. He made it way after. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of throws back in the dark triad a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah because like he threatened them after the videos came out and he they was he was being torn down then publicly like this is right after um friends per second dropped him and like a lot of um people like the sea of star developers were talking about removing him from the game because he was an npc in there too that's all coming up still uh, yeah so. so they so that throws it in like he's trying to secure a position because, yeah. like, okay, so that throws it in as a legitimate dark triad of sorts. Over a newly discovered alarming inconsistency. And so, uh, we just, every year, we try to raise as much money as possible, and then we go work with, you know, Alzheimer's Association of America, University of San Francisco, um, Association for FTD, which is what my mom had, FTD. So we've, like, worked with big and small organizations across the board. It was now clear Gerard, when talking about the Open Hand Foundation in 2023, knowing that the money was not being donated, was bold-faced lying to his audience and friends on multiple occasions. 
Well, that was not the discovery that shocked the internet. Indyland isn't the only charity event that Open Hand runs. In fact, it's only half of the story. Open Hand also holds a charity golf tournament, which pulls in tens of thousands of dollars in sponsorships every year. And the interesting thing about the money the golf tournament raises is that it seems to disappear. The main way the PBD West Convenience Cup Challenge appears to raise money is via sponsorships. Brands will pay the Open Hand Foundation to appear on banners and signs throughout the golf course, along with having the opportunity to set up tents and stands and have their employees play in the tournament. The PBD West Cup even tells us what these sponsorships cost showing that different tiers give different benefits. The crux of this is that the revenue of the Open Hand Foundation kept increasing. The amount Indoland was publicly earning was the lion's share of the 990PF's revenue. More and more, when subtracting the amount Indoland earned, the golf tournament, which was growing in the years prior to the introduction of Indoland, was now seemingly decreasing. By using the images of the yearly golf tournament, taking into account the posted cost of sponsorships and the participants via images of the event, the revenue on the filings was not matching up with how much should have been earned. In the 2019 filing, Open Hand only raised $123,000, which means that somehow the Golf Cup now only raised $14,000. Every single year, the Syzygy Foundation, the charity founded by Jamie Lee Curtis, gives a grant to Open Hand. In 2021, they gave them $25,000. If you add these together, you get around $136,000. But shockingly, for the entire year of 2021, Open Hand only received $136,000, which means again, the Golf Cup hardly raised anything at all. Mudahar also did a lengthier breakdown of the subject. When given even generous earnings or the lack thereof, the numbers were still not adding up. When you add in the grant, the Tiltify, you have maybe a few thousand dollars, uh, at best like 15 grand that one year to play around with, uh, to cover a shortfall in the books. But when you add the golf tournament, especially the golf tournament, you're always exceeding that, um, that, that revenue that's posted in the books, which again, is bad. Where is the money? Why isn't all of it seemingly being reported? That's a question that I now have to ask. While both Mudahar and Carl were wanting a third-party investigation, what was wanted for most was an explanation. The filings only show the revenue, but not the sources. It is not itemized. The same goes for the expenses that are widely undescriptive and inconsistent with their descriptions year after year. And on the back end was the fear that the family was pocketing the money. There was a possibility that the money reported was not even there, that it was stolen. This was quelled when the AFTD, or the Association for Frontal Temporal Degradation, announced they received $600,000 from the Open Hand Foundation in December. Maybe they rounded down and did not include the $55,000 that was reported in the 2020 990PFs that were still not up to date, meaning that they did not report on the 2023 golf tournament and Indyland. But perhaps this was to be donated at a later date for some tax or expense reason. What this did not resolve was the loss of value from the money just sitting stagnantly in a bank account. In this way, the donation is still less than what it could have been. Additionally, when Pro Jared was going through his own controversy, Gerard donated $15,000 on a whim when he was truly not involved at all. It is also possible that Gerard's company is dry, that it has lost so much money from its projects in 2023 that Gerard could not donate additional money if he wanted to. There was so much speculation that was meant to be silenced by a response, which finally came December 9th, 2023. To set the record straight, I want to make it 100% clear, at no point in the Foundation's history was there any criminal or financial fraud. I think we got caught up, I think I missed the one thing at the beginning of this. ...and friends on multiple occasions. Well, that was not the discovery that shocked the internet. Indyland isn't the only charity event that Open Hand runs. In fact, it's only half of the story. Open Hand also holds a charity golf tournament, which pulls in tens of thousands of dollars in sponsorships every year. And the interesting thing about the money the golf tournament raises is that it seems to disappear. The main way the PBD West Convenience Cup Challenge appears to raise money is via sponsorships. Brands will pay the Open Hand Foundation to appear on banners and signs throughout the golf course, along with having the opportunity to set up tents too. and stands. So there's that. But I think it comes back around, if I remember right. Yeah, I think somewhere in and around here, it comes back around with the charity stuff, with the golf tournament. Dean brand that one year to play around with, uh, to cover a shortfall in the books. But when you add the golf tournament, especially the golf tournament, you're always exceeding that, um, that, that revenue that's posted in the books, which again, is bad. Where is the money? Why isn't all of it seemingly being reported? That's a question that I now have to ask. While both Mudahar and Carl were wanting a third-party investigation, what was wanted for most was an explanation. The filings only show the revenue, but not the sources. It is not itemized. The same goes for the expenses that are widely undescriptive and inconsistent with their descriptions year after year. And on the back end was the fear that the family was pocketing the money. There was a possibility that the money reported was not even there, that it was stolen. This was quelled when the AFTD, or the Association for Frontal Temporal Degradation, announced they received $600,000 from the Open Hand Foundation in December. Maybe they rounded down and did not include the $55,000 that was reported in the 2020 990PFs that were still not up to date, meaning that they did not report on the 2023 golf tournament and Indyland. But perhaps this was to be donated at a later date for- Oh, it is. It's in Jared's response. That's what I'm looking for. ...some tax or expense reason. What this did not resolve was the loss of value from the money just sitting stagnantly in a bank account. 
In this way, the donation is still less than what it could have been. Additionally, when Pro Jared was going through his own controversy, Gerard donated $15,000 on a whim when he was truly not involved at all. It is also possible that Gerard's company is dry, that it has lost so much money from its projects in 2023 that Gerard could not donate additional money if he wanted to. There was so much speculation that was meant to be silenced by a response which finally came December 9th, 2023. To set the record straight, I want to make it 100% clear, at no point in the Foundation's history... In this response, there's particular wording that he's going to use in correspondence with the website that I'll point out. Was there any criminal or financial fraud? None. A lot of folks have been saying that if I didn't do anything wrong, that I should have said something sooner, or that my conversation with the accusers was considered my full side of the story. But when there is allegation after allegation being made, it takes a long time to gather the evidence and facts to refute claims. This will be my he only video really response grumpy. on this matter. Look at his face. He's like really grumpy. He looks like one of those like angry. Uh, he reminds me of an angry puppet here. <laughs> Though Gerard positions the delay of this video as a necessary requirement for its fact-finding, his video containing virtually no receipts, itemized breakdowns of the filings, nor clarification for his own lies shows how incompetent and ignorant he is. Though Gerard does make it quite explicit that he is not involved with the golf tournament. My right here, right here. There's, there's gonna be like key wording right here. My father runs an annual okay. golf tournament, and this golf event hasn't always contained a charitable component, but has always been in dedication to my mother to bring awareness to FTD. I would often be present at these events, but beyond giving an occasional speech, I was not and still am not involved in any of the event planning. Did you catch what he said? Yeah, was it, was... It, it was not always a charitable component. Yes. So if it's yeah. not necessarily always the charity, meaning they can take the money as they please. Mm -hmm. So, And I believe this is know. also confirmed on the website, if I remember correctly. I thought they shared the website, but I might be conflating two different parts. Hmm. So, wouldn't that be considered fraud if he's using the charity as like an expense? Uh, basically, a, well, not an expense, but like as like how should I put this? A branding resource of sorts. They're using it as an income source, but they're also using it as an expense. On the nine nineties, they're listing the golf charity as an expense, but they're not bringing in any of the revenue. So they're saying it's a charity or that the open hand charity is paying for this income source. That's the bad part. Mm, you're okay. really, you're really mixing two things that cannot be mixed. It's either an income source and it's not a charity, which you're using the word charity in, incorrectly there, but you could say that then necessarily, you know, it's kind of one of those, you are the charity so the income can be used for you. You could do that. But the fact that they're saying open hands paying the expenses for the golf charity, but not receiving any of the contribution is where it gets really fucked up. And that is solely put on by his father. And that's where I think the father had a bigger hand in this. Because I guarantee you that charity still year over year has brought in more than the fucking Indie Land. Yeah, I mean, golf tournaments usually do bring in more, like, money than any other charities. Yeah. And so I think a lot of the shit that you see with this video, with the the bargaining that you see in the call, all of that, directly is a result of the pressures from the father, because this is going to cut off a fairly significant revenue source for a man that's likely retired. So. Yeah, and some else that I, I i pointed out earlier was just the connections yep. i mean there was keurig dr pepper there was pepsi there was coke there was monster like this is definitely like where the subreddit was like this is like charles khalil's like his little pet project to get in good with like the bougie companies i think that's all his dad i think that comes from whatever uh, networking and resources that dad has because my my point for that it goes into a totally separate area but it makes sense when you think about the timeline they talked about how uh the us uh uscs or whatever the fuck it was um there's a a confirmation letter from the chair of that organization from the time that he would have been chair would have been 2007 Gerard is the exact same age as me, meaning he would have graduated in 2006. 
In fact, it's actually brought up early in the video that he graduated in 06. Like, so the likelihood of him being able to contact and organize to get a letter of endorsement from a charity a year after he graduates high school is highly suspicious to me. It makes me think that this is more of the father's stuff going towards setting up this foundation and everything. And that the father is definitely a larger part in the charity fraud. And I think that it, there is a strong case to look into the father's work. Um, because I bet you I would probably be able to make better ties to how else would you know to contact Pepsi or Coca-Cola or Monster or any of that stuff. And like, yeah. uh, okay, so the actual crime, I guess you could say, outside of the clerical error, yeah, would be using one charity to subsidize the expenses of another. That, yep, and then uh, misappropriation of funds from that other charity because they're they're not tracked anywhere in any of the nine ninety filings. Mm. So it's a clerical error as far as the the showing the expenses. It's a misappropriation of funds when it comes down to the income. And you said that his mother-in-law or his stepmother uh, is the treasurer? Yeah, I think so. Jim Let said me... that there is a board of directors page early on. Well, I was just trying to remember what Jim said. You don't have yeah. to scroll back to it. Yeah, I was just trying to see if I could quickly find it. Yeah, um, I have the Open Hand Foundation website now. I'm trying to see where there's... I know Mudahar has it in his video, like, where they actually have, like, the actual charity listed. Yeah. Okay, so that goes through all that. Somewhere right in here. That's the filings. Yeah, this US... Or UCSF, there's a point where he talks about they got a letter from the chair of that in 2007, and... Wait a minute. You know, fuck, I just thought of something. You, you know how they have all the other companies there listed, yep. right? Yep. Uh, and, like, the banners and everything. I'm wondering if, I don't know, this is probably some scummy lawyer -y shit, but I wonder if they could use that as an argument to say, well, these are the sponsors, and the Open Hand Foundation is one of them. Um... Thousand dollars from the Open Hand Foundation in December. Maybe they rounded down and did not include the fifty-five thousand dollars that was reported in the twenty twenty nine ninety PFs that were still not up to date. Many Where the fuck is it? I just saw the fucking picture of the banner. There. Yeah, it's supposed to be like right here. There. Hmm. Because that says it's benefiting. Yeah. Uh, Open Hand Foundation. Yeah. However, there's no income listed. Yeah, right here it has um on ProPublica. Uh, Magdalene Ibrahim, which is their stepmom, is the secretary. Does it say anything for, like, a, a treasurer or financial? No, it just has, I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, so it's just secretary, not, like, CFO or anything? But it has Gerard as the director, she's the secretary, and then vice president is Jock. Their sister is the director, and their their dad is the president. Where was it at on this? Oh, uh, if you look down at the bottom, it, where it says compensation, it says key employees and officers. So if his dad is the president, okay, I, mm, I miss it. I don't know. It seems like his. Wait, is that the same if his one? dad is the president of another charity, I yeah, wonder I, if he, because I'm wondering if this is like one of those situations where it's kind of like a parent charity and a child charity, which yeah, means it, his filings would be under. Yeah, no, stop. I don't know. If... Uh, keep scrolling down a little bit. Uh, yeah. Right there. Key compensation. Oh, right key here. employees and officers. Yeah. And it view more and it shows everybody involved in it. <clears throat> Not to cut you off, Gigi. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, like, if he's the president of it, that means he technically owns it, right? Yeah. So, okay, so this would be like a parent-child charity kind of situation where you have a parent charity, which would be the one actually running the golf uh, tournaments, which would be under, I don't know if that'd be under, like, a 501c3 or a 501c4. What are you, uh, what are you saying? I'm sorry, I'm not following. 
as far as the parent child uh, goes. Okay, you got the parent charity, which is like the main one that runs the golf. That would be open hand. Now, yeah, it all runs through open hand. Yeah, it's all it's all run through open hand. Indie land and all of that goes through open hand. So no matter okay, what, yeah. all the expenses and income should be labeled here. All right, I didn't know if like because the way how you were talking about the father, it's like he had his own separate gig set up in which the funds were being subsidized for. I think he does out of this, which is why you don't see the income listed in open hand. Yeah, and I'm thinking the only way how that could happen is with a 501c4, which would be a super PAC, because you don't have to disclose much of anything out of those when it comes to sizable donations or uh, you just have to list, like, you know, a very simplified revenue gain. I don't know if he has that, but that kind of runs still, you could You can't run the expenses for the golf tournament under open hand and then put the income under the super pack it would still have to go well, through a donation or true. The, or I'm, the expenses I'm would wondering... have to get listed on the super pack like that's still fraud hmm. yeah i don't know i was just thinking maybe that's what was doing it because... I, I get what you're saying yeah because that would have been right around the time when super packs were like becoming a thing because uh what was it the citizens united case was happening in which corporations were declared as people in a Supreme Court ruling when it came to political uh, donations, yeah. which allowed for super PACs to form. But not all super PACs are considered political, but rather just a charity donation in which they can advertise and market whatever the hell they wanted. Like if you wanted to push an issue, like you could actually use a super PAC for that. I was wondering if it was like one of those you have the parent 501c4, uh, or 50, yeah, I think this was 501c4, and then you have the 501c3, which would be the child uh, charity that would be tied to it. Like, one would be set up first. Yeah, and then you have... still, though, for accounting transparency, that doesn't, it wouldn't line up. Like, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I was wondering if it was one of those situations, or if that could even be plausible. Oh, it's right here. This is fucking point blank. Here. This is this is how the golf tournament got set up. So, obviously, uh, since I have already tried to dox myself once before, I'm not <laughs> going to show LinkedIn on the uh, stream. <laughs> <laughs> but here, take the father's name, run the father's name into Google, take the LinkedIn result, look at his company, take his company, and where did I just see it? Uh, it's a uh, retailer stuff. And then you take the retailers are going to know how to contact all of these brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because doesn't he? Because I think it's like known that he does like gas stations and shit. Yeah. So he would have he would have access to all of those through the vendors. Yeah. Mm. And it draws further scrutiny because off screen I can't show it, but like he's the head of this stuff. Head of what? This power. He's uh, the head of this power buying dealers group so you would think that he has enough business sense to know like to look at that discrepancy like that this you is not think. this is not somebody that is going to be ignorant about the books let's just put it that way so not without willfully okay, so doing it so you're suggesting that he left his son to hang out to dry on this charity to run it himself right i yeah. think he kind of let he kind of let khalil take the fucking uh death blows from the internet people that he has no allegiance or interaction with yes okay because to him they're internet people this isn't somebody in his business community calling out fraud to his face yeah and it makes sense because it, he has he doesn't really respect gerard no like so he was just he's just sort of using him mm. okay that makes a bit more sense then yeah, I, I think this is a matter of the father's a successful businessman, set up this charity initially. Um, eventually, Gerard is a contributing force to the charity, but then is also going to eventually be the person that, uh, through his own incompetence, is delivering them the uh, death blow because through the incompetence of him not donating money, somebody leaks this out, internet people find out Budahar, Carl Jobs, they investigate, 
they are then going to call in IRS, which I know at least Mudahar has. Uh, whether that's going to be enough to actually gain attention would be the biggest fucking pitfall in all of this. But then well, did, that would call uh, into question all the stuff with the father's portion of it, which is the golf tournament, which is really unscrupulous because. Yeah, I'm it, wondering who was the who was the tip off. It would have to be someone close to Gerard. Some people were saying the thing that maybe it was Greg tipped off Carl Could privately, have been. and then that's when Could have been. things started spiraling. Some people say it was one of the ex employees. Hmm. Well, they'd have to, like, have access to the books, wouldn't they? In order to even know that this Not was even happening. Not necessarily, because you can find everything publicly. So it's enough, it could be someone that hated Gerard enough to look into stuff, but doesn't have enough power to, like, bring it to attention. Because, I mean, you could look through ProPublica and find that, like, the money's sitting there. Mm. So it could just be somebody that hated him just enough, which greg would make sense for that i mean yeah i mean greg does have a track record of like trying to sabotage or at least in the eyes of the fan base yep trying to sabotage him mm -hmm. he would have motive but i'm kind of thinking i don't, I kind of want to go with a guilty conscious kind of uh collaborator of sorts yeah because it doesn't need to be anybody on this board in order to call it out because like i said all the all the information is black and white right here but i do think that basically the father was running an unscrupulous charity that he was directly benefiting for basically using the charity to write off the expenses for everything well that well, and actually he was and on, then I, the son's was, money that he was bringing in was kind of absorbing it i was wondering whether or not the money like was actually going to charity rather than like a personal check as a bit of a favor for good publicity. If it was a personal check made out to the father, since he's the only one who would be able to get these connections, it would be yeah. kind of a, what would be a confident, not a confidence scam, but um, I'm trying to think of the right word, but it, it's, it runs similar to a confidence scam of sorts. And this is going back to because, because honestly, if the father's using his own resources here to contact these people, he's probably, if we're going with your theory, Pat, he's probably looking at it as like, well, I was the one who brought these people in. I should benefit. Yeah, here's my theory, and it can even play it out in the numbers right here. Remember how I was talking about trending data? Mm hmm Okay. So you have 33000 in income or in assets. 33, then 66 then 94, then 115. And then it jumps way up in 2018. I would dare to check when the whole uh, the whole Indigo or whatever the Indie Land thing started, but I bet you it'd be right around here. And I bet you yeah, as cause... it took off and brought in more money, the father saw that as an exit strategy to slowly taper off the income coming in from the golf charity. Because mm -hmm. it also kind of tracks here. If you look back at like the older expenses, like all of this, it lines up. See how it's like, it, there's a good set of trending data right here. And then this data looks like it trends together. Same with the donations. It all correlates around the same time. That I think the sun thing took off a lot better than he thought it did. And he saw that as a way to slowly contribute less, but the sun can still pay for his golf tournament i think the father is doing some unscrupulous shit basically on gerard's name i wouldn't be surprised because of you yeah like it sounds a like a respectful attitude towards him yeah because yeah. it sounds like from what you're pointing out here it seems like it's a around like an obtuse version of a kickback scheme i know yeah yeah but let me get back to where i was gerard's rubbing elbow he's using his charles is using gerard's money to like finance his own rubbing elbows with these big companies yeah yeah it gives him an excuse to make a phone call yeah and then it's just a quick payday yep yeah and his son's not going to know any better to sit there and question him like I, I genuinely think that for all intents and purposes gerard's a fucking retard and he was the perfect fucking person to have at the face of this yeah 
and the father dad. and the father is not concerned because all the accusations are coming from internet people and internet people don't matter to him yeah and gerard is so desperate for his approval he would have just went with it just to try to get dad's approval yep so so in other words he's a patsy yep okay he's a Makes patsy sense. without without ever realizing it he never smelled his own blood in the water Okay, so we went from Dark Triad to Lee Harvey Oswald. Got yes, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I had to show all of this shit to show you that, like, this is why. <laughs> this is why I <laughs> think this. <laughs> he is the Dark Oswald. <laughs> he is the Dark Oswald. <laughs> For $82,409.19, here's where the issue lies. In 2019, the year in question, Gerard stated on Twitter that the preliminary earnings from Indyland were $119,418. Preliminary earnings are net earnings. Yet somehow he states the net earnings for 2019 were actually $82,409. That is a $27,000 difference. But perhaps Gerard meant gross earnings. But when checking the 990PF's expenses, they were not $27,000 for 2019, they were reported as $13,000 in total for 2019. And when combined with $31,371.55 in revenue from the golf tournament and $10,000 from a direct supporter, it adds up to $123,780.74. Using Gerard's prior statements, the lack of reported expenses still doesn't add up, and Gerard still fails to provide a receipt even after this video came out. On the topic of expenses, Andy Land throughout the years was making the bold statements alongside Gerard that all the money was going to the Open Hand Foundation. And even in Andy Land 2023, he reiterated This is the catchy wording that fucks him up and makes us further fraud. Rated this. Thank you, Bernie Link, for the Prime. As a reminder, all bits and subs, including Amazon Primes, uh, go towards the uh, the charity as well. So it's all all a pass through, all going for a good cause. Yet in his response video, he said this. Income from Twitch subscriptions and bits, along with merchandise, have offset some of the production costs. See, that's fraudulent. Him sitting there saying, you, you can't sit there and say, it's all going to the charity. And then saying like, oh no, it's all going to the charity after we pay expenses. It is common for fundraisers to recoup the cost for events. Though it is uncommon for fundraisers to claim all the money goes untouched, then turn around and use the money. Gerard taking donations to pay for Indyland is not only him spending donations on himself, it's him paying for something that he directly benefits from. But besides, what he spends that money on is ultimately irrelevant. He said he would give that money to charity, but instead, he spent it. That's fraud, that's theft, and that is embezzlement. And what makes this even worse is that he would then go and lie, trying to take credit for paying for everything himself. So for those of you guys who don't know, we had a show last year, um, and it, it, it went great, but it was very expensive, and we, TOBG covered the cost of it, but we, we have kind of a rule of, like, we want to make sure that, like, as we do charity events, that we're not costing the charity organization or really anyone outside of our, our, our awesome sponsors. The guys at FlyQuest who've been so supportive, um, we want to make sure that the money that we do raise actually goes to charity and, and is spent properly. Carl's video has three minutes of clips back to back of George stating how all the money was going to charity. While some of these clips can be excused as Gerard states proceeds, which can mean net or gross income, it is clear that Gerard was misleading his audience and that he was recouping the cost for Indyland. Regardless, going forward, Gerard stated that he was stripping the charity aspect of Indyland. One of the few receipts he did provide was an autopsy report that none of the content creators requested. When my mother passed away in 2013, we That's a key thing too, that he's stripping the charity aspect of Indyland. So now like for this year and every year going forward, it doesn't even have a charity tie-in. It's just a showcase now. Yes. Mm. And I think the father okay. pulled that because of internet people bothering his income. Yeah, but like the autopsy report, I mean, I don't know. That move in and of itself, I could see the father doing because he would have like the authority to pull that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that. But yeah, I'm talking about I mean, I'm talking about the whole just the, the statement of stripping stripping indiegogo of the or indiegogo indie land and, of the charity no i'm just it. yeah i'm just saying like one other key aspect is the autopsy report because oh, yeah, only yeah. the only the husband of a dead partner has the right to access and make public an autopsy report so that's a clear sign his father is doing this yeah i think so too yeah because don't even... his, her son wouldn't have power of attorney over her. No, not you know, until the father's anything. deceased. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a clear sign the father did it. Like, I don't yeah. know how, like, people overlook that. Her brain and spinal cord to the same academics and doctors we worked with to further advance their research. There's a link in the description to her autopsy report that confirms her brain and spinal cord were both donated to science. This was an extremely personal decision for us. 
Because of my family's history, we had considered all legacy efforts that we had personally made to be a part of the Open Hand Foundation's history. With as much confusion as there was surrounding the scandal, there are two things that are reinforced as fact in this video. Gerard is a liar, and even when apologizing, he inaccurately portrays what he's yeah, apologizing for. Yeah, because here's the thing. Look, he tries to cover up for his father there by saying it was a, an extremely hard decision for all of us, as if it were a yeah. group decision, like yep. board of directors kind of thing. Yes. But really, it was the father pushing the idea, and they had to be all on board because of, like, the sentimentality aspect of it, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, so, yeah, the father is the key suspect here. He's yes. just, like, the useful idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to keep saying yes, but, yep, you've got it 100% now. All right, I, I this, see where you're going. Action needed to be taken, and to that point, I'm sorry. I'm disappointed that I was not more straightforward regarding the Foundation's timeline for making donations and that I made statements potentially implying donations were made when they had not yet been. Gerard was stating that these were applications, or something he suggested indirectly, but he directly stated, uh, currently working with the University of San Francisco and we're kind of one of their main, um, their main funding uh, support partners. That was 2020. In the timeline, this is when Gerard alleges he did not know the money was not being donated. But then this was in 2023 when Gerard knew he was lying boy with my dad in honor of my mom who had dementia and so uh we just every year we try to raise as much money as possible and then we go work with you know Alzheimer's association of america university of san francisco um association for ftd which is what my mom had ftd so we've like worked with big and small organizations across the board and he was like it'd be really cool if we did a show all about raising money for people who are making huge headways and it gets worse and stranger. There's a tweet where Gerard states that he raises a total of $600,000 to $750,000 yearly for various charities. These unproven claims are entirely bizarre, but don't exist in a vacuum. And Gerard's continuous lies only provided fuel to Carl Jobs and Mudahar's response videos. Most of Gerard's video is him going over information unrelated to me, my videos, or my claims. He hardly addresses my concerns about the golf charity event money, essentially saying, we didn't take the money, trust me bro. He provides no bank statements, no accounting, nothing. Apparently, we just have to take this proven liar at his word, which unfortunately, I'm not willing to do. It literally requires you to take this man's word, which over the course of this whole investigation has shown you should do anything but take his word, without actual receipts. The internet finding out that Gerard was a liar was certainly shocking as was Gerard's threats. These allegations were made by individuals who self-admittedly aren't even financial or legal professionals. These allegations are slanderous, and we believe we're done with selfish intent. What a pathetic bitch. Gerard closing the video in such a way only <laughs> served to strengthen the disdain of him, though this aggression is thought to have been pushed by his brother Jock, who was supposedly seen on Reddit, stating that he was the one going to push the lawsuit. My, my brother was the aggressive Jock, who named Jock, uh, who uh, was five foot six, but like jumping in the face of the biggest quarterback headbutt first into them so that was kind of you know abrasive guy those red comments no longer exist so beyond a screenshot it is hard to prove that jock was continuously instigating as for the rest of the completionist reddit what was once a subreddit dedicated to the discussion of completionist episodes had turned into a place to follow the ongoing drama a mod exhausted with the ongoing discourse made the announcement that any new post related to the ongoing drama would be removed going as far to interject their own selfish reasoning quote these last several weeks have been very difficult on me having to sit by and watch people tear down a person that i have talked with personally multiple times as well as someone who had been a cornerstone of my life for over 10 years now unquote and there were attempts to shift the conversation back to the completionist episodes but redditors were not so enthusiastic to engage in such conversations at this point the mods just set the subreddit to private and a newly erected completionist 2 that allowed free speech fell the void of its predecessor it was here that a five minute long compilation of gerard stating all the money was going to charity could be found Additionally, it was discovered that Gerard was removing comments talking about the charity in his videos. In terms of lessening the backlash, this was hardly effective. Also in December, his character was removed from the indie game Sea of Stars, which there were memes made about. Mudahar released a call with Gerard, and various creators that either knew Gerard or of Gerard found his actions to be reprehensible. There was even a Hard Drive.net article about Gerard 100%ing his career, but Gerard did not seem to think so. After a break following his response video, he released a new completionist video in January of 2024. Before we start today's video, I want to recognize that I know that I have lost a lot of your trust at home. This video, this you could use to sit there and say that he's maybe psychopathic, though. I will say that. Uh, just you because know, I, of something you'll see here. Yeah, I'm guessing this guy hasn't deleted his Twitter. Probably not. If you could find it, I kind of have an idea. I could so that. say you could watch you could tweet to watch this real quick. I'll, I'll dig out and see what I can okay. find. Today's video, I want to recognize that I know that I have lost a lot of your trust at home. And I want to spend as much time as it will take to rebuild and re-earn your trust. It's going to take time. 
but I'm willing to put in the commitment and I hope you give me a chance. So with that said, thank you for being here and thanks for watching. Everyone who knows me knows that Super Mario RPG is one of my favorite That fucking jumping attitude? Tell me that's not yeah. psychopathic. I mean, that, <laughs> that clearly wasn't edited in, so. <laughs> I'm trying to look to see. Because I was thinking you could shoot him a tweet. I don't know if this will get you blocked or not, but it's like. He's protected. You know the truth. I think. He's protected. Yeah. I'm guessing. Oh, I'm guessing this is him. Hmm. Yeah, that is him. I guess you. Okay, so I guess you can't use his at in a tweet, huh? Nope. No, I'd have to follow him and hopefully get a follow back, which is highly I'll try unlikely. it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was gonna say like, I'll see. if you do get ex like if you do get accepted, you could shoot him like either a DM or an yeah. open tweet and say like, "Look, Gerard, we know the truth. You're a patsy. Yeah, only your father could release the you know." <laughs> the autopsy report. Gerard Javier we, Oswald. We know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard, the gig is up. We know there was a yeah. grassy knoll. <laughs> yeah, your father was the second shooter. No pun it's intended. over, brother. We're coming for you. <laughs> Fed baby smoker. raper. You baby raper. <laughs> We're coming for you. Yeah. I just kind of want to see what his reaction is if we just put out that little detail. Only your father could release the, the <laughs> autopsy report. That said, thank you for being here, and thanks for watching. Everyone who knows me knows that Super Mario RPG is one of my favorite games of all time. That awkward transition between lightly addressing heavy allegations to then shifting to the completionist series it did not win over viewers. This is made clear by the top comments he forgot to delete. On Reddit, there was a particular comment, or rather post, that was garnering attention. Greg Wilmont came back from the abyss to comment on the situation. Quote, I'm happy to say that my hands are entirely clean in this situation. This whole ordeal is one of the exact reasons why I had to remove all of my videos. I had a feeling that there would be some sort of controversy. That's kind of suspect. Suspect, yeah. Well, even this opening paragraph, I'm not comfortable with revealing anything privileged that I know about the situation currently. I had a feeling there would be some sort of controversy associated with the family after my departure, and I wanted nothing to do with it. Goddamn baby raper. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if we, if you, you can get, like, you know, the request to allow your account to follow him, I'd suggest doing the whole Patsy line. <laughs> Because, I mean, the fucking autopsy report should have been a fucking, like, you know, clue yeah. that both Carl and Muda should have picked up on. But I make a pretty strong fucking point. This is something I realized months ago, by the way. Like, when all this shit was breaking. But I had no real good way to articulate it without, like, the full scope of it. Yeah. And for yeah, me, so it would have now... been it would have been five hours of going through the scope of it. Plus, it's now taken me two hours to explain this <laughs> yeah, well, well, we're here like busting balls and joking and everything I i'm just saying like seriously it the father has to be behind it because that fucking autopsy report man that, the autopsy report the business connections for the donos for the uh charity for the golf tournament the letter that would have been there for uh that would have come from the charity that they're supposedly donating towards would have been a business acquaintance likely, or at least somebody that he was able to easily get access to that would have been well beyond Gerard's capabilities coming one year out of high school. Like there's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there. I mean, hell the father is the guilty party. It's like, look, we know you're a patsy. The only father's father could have the father's business history, father and he's the president of the charity. But then had no yeah. idea that his son's pulling this massive scam by stockpiling money. Yeah. All right. Honestly, all right. this is how the tweet should read: "It's like Gerard, we know you're a patsy. Only your father could release that autopsy report. Only your father could get those sponsors. It's a fucking kickback scheme." Yeah is one of the exact reasons why I had to remove all of my videos. I had a feeling that there would be some sort of controversy associated with that family after my departure, and I wanted nothing to do with it." Unquote. The other channels Gerard was involved in followed suit and announced they would be continuing without his involvement. Gerard has continued to upload videos despite them being poorly received. His social blade shows that his views have fallen to half a million a month, and his videos, though they have been rebranded to exclude his image from the thumbnails, cannot wipe away the stain of a serial liar. 
On a stream in March, he expands on where TOVG is now. I've made the tough decision to close down the office. Um, what the fuck? And so uh, we're in the Why middle of... Wait, hold up. Why does he look like an extra on Duck's Dynasty? <laughs> I thought the same fucking thing. <laughs> like, what the... F like, dude, come on. <laughs> I, I honestly think, like... He is being. He has had to pay for this with his channel, and his dad's getting way scot free. And I think he's catching a lot of the heat from this. Well, like, obviously, be in the face of it, but he looks like he's gone through the ringer. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said he looks like he's from Duck Dynasty. <laughs> and one other thing too that like uh, they pointed out as like it's it's a big deal, but I I never had a good way to articulate but even goes into what you sent over, Jim. When you look at there, there's multiple directors. So he could be director for just Indie Land. Yeah. And yeah. work for the charity. You could be a director of something and not have any privilege of knowing the financial data. Yeah. Which would make it gross. Like. Yeah. Like, I, I just, so. I, I so totally want to rock this guy's world. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> evil. <laughs> Because that is going to probably either get him to block you immediately or it's going to kick a fucking hornet's nest wide open. Yeah. Of, um, of closing operations and uh, uh, moving everything to my house. And so, um, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to build like a completionist set, if you will, in my garage. Where he wants posted all the... The other thing, too, that I kind of want to point out, what did he financially gain from this? Like, there is somebody financially gaining from this. He gained nothing. Who? He actually lost Gerard. Yeah. I think I think this was 100% to seek approval from his dad. I think that, that has fucked him up his entire life. And then oh, he yeah. didn't do anything his dad. I, I, don't think there, I don't think he was thinking of the financial gain. I think he was thinking, as long as I'm liquid enough that I can keep going. This This is him falling on the sword for his father, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yep. I think that's what it is. I think it's 100% from the angle of him as a... Uh, um, I've you know totally I mean. changed your guys' perspective on this whole completionist thing, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, I, I'd, oh, say, yeah. <laughs> I'd say, unlike Boogie, he's actually suffering from parental abuse. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I believe there's a lot of, like, there's a lot more to point to him coming out this way that I'm showing than there is to say that he's a mastermind of some scheme to a charity that he's not the director to. He's Well, he's a director to, but he's not the president to. That he has no financial game directly that I can prove. Like, he's actually I mean, lost more in this than probably anybody. It actually recontextualizes that call he had with Mudahar and J uh, Carl. Basically, he's looking for a way out. Yes. But he can't, like, commit to it. Yes, because if he does, he'll throw his father under the bus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The employees have worked on his videos in the description. Now in current uploads, none are found. Though the charity money at minimum was donated, this scandal changed his image. Where Gerard was once viewed as a pillar of the community that had the purest intentions, has now been rebranded as a pathetic manipulator who will lie on a whim to enhance his appearance. Gerard is untrustworthy, irresponsible, and morally conflicted. And at most, Gerard is a fraud. Thank you again for... Yeah, that's everything.